won't you start with me? What, me? No, this. Uh. It just fucking dropped down a level for no reason. That would just be funny if you just hit me with a don't you start with me. <laughs> Gotta get the labels yep, off. Yep, yep. We're not promoted by anything yet. I'm really bad at this. We're hungry young lion. <laughs> My hands are too slippery. No, I got it. Let daddy, ah! let, let, let daddy help you. <laughs> I got it. You're a big boy. I uh, am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can do things myself. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. All right. Ready to go? I've been ready. All right. Three, two. And hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Select Start Network. And I am one of your hosts, Justin Larache. And with me today is my trusty partner in crime, Liberty Roundtree. You fucking snake. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, everyone, how you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> <laughs> Before they even respond, I'm doing good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, we got okay. this. It's not like we're live or anything. Like yeah, I know. Anything. I mean, I do got to talk to Greg about that. About getting it live? Yeah, because he hasn't gotten back to me ever since he said he's going to bring it up to, like, the head people. Mm -hmm. So I got to double check to see what the hell's going on with yeah, that. And get, on, get on the Twitch stream and start getting those bits. <laughs> gotta, gotta, I made my money off gold, oil. And cheers. And, <laughs> <laughs> and cheers. <laughs> Holy you want those you want those special uh, emotes? <laughs> you gotta give me money. You gotta subscribe for the next six months. Oh god, I love Twitch as much as I hate it. Like, yeah, I know. <laughs> same here. Um, so talking about that, do you? So do you have a Twitch or Amazon Prime account? No, no, no. I don't even have a Twitch account. Oh really? I just I always I I'm not into Twitch enough that I can like go on it every day or anything like that it's just every once in a while i'll go on because i'll watch the overwatch league which is like which is like it's easy to get to you just over, google overwatch league it takes you yeah. there on twitch yeah, yeah um and then every once in a while when a streamer i like is on um like if like shroud is playing or something like that yeah, yeah. i'll just go on i'll watch for a bit but it's but you've never made an account or no never like subbed or donated or anything like that i'm just not into it enough and okay, it's I like that. i don't have the money to well, well not even not making an account i know it doesn't cost money yeah, yeah. but but like to put the cheers and you got to actually pay up for yeah, that. Yeah, support yeah, yeah. people. Yeah, so I used to be the same way until I got an Amazon Prime account and I realized like it before comes that with Twitch yeah, Prime? like you get a free Twitch Prime which gives you a free uh, sub every month. So mm. you don't have to pay for the 4.99 to sub to someone. And I need to double check this cuz I'm hoping I'm doing a good thing. Uh, my sub, sorry guys if you're hearing some little rough noises there, I just want to adjust the mic. Um, I'm hoping that when you've used your Twitch Prime sub to someone they still get something out of it. I'm yeah. hoping because isn't Amazon Prime like a monthly thing? Or no, no, it's it's a yearly per or yearly purchase of like seventy nine bucks a month or a month. Seventy nine. Oh, Jesus, yeah, Jesus say, Christ! My God, you better get like a fucking ninety percent discount. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's a seventy nine dollar like uh, a year purchase, and yeah, you get like two day free shipping with Amazon Prime. Um, you might get some special deals. I don't know. You get uh, Amazon Prime Video. Yeah. So like Netflix streaming service, right? But with Amazon, yeah, there's some original programs there. Like like one that I keep hearing about that I don't want to watch because I keep hearing about it, The Tick. Oh yeah. yeah. The Tick. Uh, I want to watch it. I'm wasn't there, there was that there was that really really good one that came out for there's, Amazon? Um, was it something Gods or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna that. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> I yeah. gotta figure out. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, you get all that stuff and you get the free Twitch thing. So I'm subscribed to Alfredo Plays. Yes, if I honestly, if I was gonna guess who you would yeah. be, it was that. So like originally, I was I was thinking about like jumping around between the two, like mm -hmm. between like tell Alfredo plays, maybe then I'll go to like uh, Ryan Haywood or maybe Mike Turney or yeah. kind of funny because like all these guys I find like they're all amazing people and you should all definitely follow them on Twitch and all that and if you can support them, support them. Mm -hmm. But then yeah, something about Fredo, man, just I got hooked in, and then I started. Um, I started uh, list, like like talking to the Discord chat and stuff, and just like made I made some friends there. And just and it, got got really into the community. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. It's and it's, it's it's the same thing, which kind of what got me into uh, the Rooster Teeth community. Yeah, which just... I, I want to talk about that a little bit, just a little bit further down the road. There's, there's a bit of an anniversary that passed for me with them. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where like I got connected. Alfredo talks to his chat and Alfredo plays with his chat. And I've never played with Alfredo except for the one time that I talked to you about it. <laughs> when you were ready to go to sleep or he's yeah. like, hey, bud, let's yeah. play. And you're like, well, yeah, like, well, well yeah, I should be going to bed because I'm going, like, I got to go to school early tomorrow. But it's Alfredo and the yeah, fam, so I'm going to play. It's Fredo. Like, yeah. you're not going to not do it. Yeah. So it's one of those things where, like, I got hooked. Everything's nice. So, like, it's awesome. And yeah, it's one of those things that I, I wouldn't probably, if I don't get another Amazon Prime 
like subscription if I don't do it for another year, I actually would consider <laughs> doing it. Like I would actually pay. Oh, what like start actually? Yeah, like every month pay Alfredo like the four ninety nine to become to continue being a subscriber. It's I made, mean, it's awesome. That's the thing is, it's not that bad, but it's yeah. just like. Well, you can only American. sub to like one person because yeah. like after a while that's gonna start to build up. Also, well, you could be an idiot like me and do your get drunk while watching Alfredo and then just start donating twenty dollar bits to him. Oh god! <laughs> I, did, I did that like back in I think it was December, maybe December or something. No, it was November. I think it was November. I got drunk at the hotel and I, like, yep. I was watching stuff and I'm like, oh, this good. guy's real funny. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking give him whatever the guy got. <laughs> check my cat. <laughs> check my check my room. By the way, I couldn't find it, but I think it was called American Gods. Yes, it is. American Gods, yes, because it's with, um, oh my God, I'm going to feel so stupid because I love him. Oh, I know uh, you're talking about. The British about. dude who was oh, in no, John I... Wick. and Wait, which British dude? Uh, he was in Deadwood. Oh my God. I'm going gonna... I'm gonna to feel like an idiot. I'm going to look it up. He right was now. also in the reboot of Death Race, which wasn't the greatest, but I mean, he was in it. Uh, Ian, oh God. No. What is it? Ian McShane. God damn it! I got the first name right. Mm -hmm. Fuck. I was gonna say uh, Sir, like Ian, like Sir Ian. Oh shit. McCallum, but I'm like no way. That's no Karen way. <laughs> He's a good actor though. I mean, yeah. I mean, they're from Britain. Of course, they're great. Uh, there's another. No, I honestly, I feel bad because I mistaked him for another guy. And now that I think about it, they don't look alike. But I can't remember his name. Um, Do you remember what he was in? It's he's been in a lot of good movies, but. Uh, the only thing I can remember him was he was in the season of Dexter. Um, Wait, which are, is, you, are you talking about the serial killer? No. Okay. Not not uh, John Lithgow. Okay, I was about to say, if you're talking about no, John No, they look nothing alike. Yeah, I was about to say, what is wrong with you? James um, Remar? No, 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 no. God. Apocalypse Killer? Is that what it's called? I, I, you, got me so, you got me so curious. Doomsday Killer was his name. Actually, that was really good. Surprise, in, motherfucker? No, in, in um, uh Tom Hanks' brother played a murderer in Dexter. He actually did a really good job. Oh, okay, Fifty Shades Darker. <laughs> <laughs> but is but it's not the Tom Hanks' son brother thing that you're thinking about. No, no, right. no. But anyways, um, while Liv's trying to search that up, uh, you might have realized that there's been a one shot this entire time. But we're gonna quickly go to the two. Oh God, I feel bad. That's that's who it is. I figured out who it was. And then we're gonna go to the one. What are you talking about. And then we're gonna go to the three. Yeah, yeah there is nothing like that because it's just Liv and I today. Yeah. <laughs> That's True. why it's. That's why we've got the the static. The, yeah, we got the I news desk. I, I don't mind the static shock sometimes. I mean, the static shock. I prefer. Works. I prefer like the multiple, but I mean, multiple is nice and everything, but you know, when you got to work with the one, you work with the one. Exactly. Yeah, By the way, fine. it was Edward James almost. For some reason, I thought it was Edward James almost. Everyone, everyone thinks like that. There's a freaking How I Met Your Mother episode where they do like the group polling, voting thing there in the public mm -hmm. with the tourists and stuff, and it's like, which one is it? The James Edward almost, or is it all, all, like Edward James almost? And everyone's just yeah. Anyways. <laughs> It's no, a funny I, uh, does he even look like Ian Mache This is really bugging me because Edward James almost is a fantastic actor. <laughs> but now you're trying to be like, does he look like him? Yeah. Well, have I been fooled this entire life? This entire well, that life doesn't look. Life. That's Edward Huzor almost. <laughs> <laughs> How many Edward almost is there? Oh my goodness. Okay. Anyways. Yeah, I'm over this. I'm over it. So, Lib, what kind of games have you been playing lately? Uh. Really, I got like I got like three three main ones. I gotta say. Yeah. What's what's wait? Can I know. I, think, I know. Can I think I, against of two of them. Yeah, two of them are obvious. Overwatch, PUBG. Yep. Last one. Take a guess. I mean, the last one. I I know. I remember because this this is a couples thing now. So I gotta prove that I listen to you yeah. when you talk. It's not that. It's not the shitty Overwatch reboot. If, no, no, no. It's remake. not Paladins. I know it's yeah. not Paladins. But you had said not too long ago that you recently restarted playing Siege. Yes. Is that the third one? Um, yes, it would be. I think so. Yes! Yeah. Great job. I know your top three. PUBG, PUBG, PUBG. Oh, motherfucker. PUBG. Oh, yeah. PUBG. Yeah, yeah. And Dragon Ball Fighters. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Dragon yeah, Ball Fighters. Yeah, I just started playing that. And, uh... Looks fucking awesome. I mean, the animation, like... So, it's weird. So, it looks like the cartoon. Yeah. So, it looks like Dragon Ball Super, Dragon Ball Z, and all that stuff. But it's also almost got, like, a stop motion to it. Like, the movement's, like, if you actually pay attention to how they move, it's a little bit choppy. Oh, okay. It's, so, it's different. It, it, it's from the guys who made the, what is it, the Blaze Blue games or whatever, like the fighting games? Um, the Guilty Gear? Guilty Gear is what it is? Uh, a Guilty Gear is one of the, it's, so it's got the Marvel vs. Capcom yes. style of fighting, yeah. but it has the Guilty Gear look. Yeah, so, yeah. So, it might be, it'd probably be Guilty I, Gear. It's probably the studio that did Guilty Gear then. Yeah. 
But uh, it, it's a great show. It's a great show. It's a great game. Um, I've I got a couple. So I've been, I played a lot more into it. Uh, I can see how some professional or like h- hardcore fighting game fans. It was Blaze Blue and Blaze Blue. Guilty Gear. Oh, so we're both right. Yeah, it's awesome. Yay, go us. <laughs> I'm going to do a hard zoom right there for that clap. Oh, God. <laughs> so slow, like... <laughs> but I'm going to make it all wet. And just like, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway, so... But yeah, I w- I've been playing the game. Um, The story is... I mean, it's a Dragon Ball story, so it's okay. It's not... You know, it's fine. Piccolo! Goku. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty <laughs> That's much. it. Goku! <laughs> when he dies and stuff. That's Krillin, by the way. God damn it. But it it's not bad. Uh, the, the, the only thing that I've had an issue with... It's not even an issue, but I can see where the hardcore uh, fighting guys would, would get... A little ticked off about it all the combos are pretty much all the same like yeah. for every character it's so the chain name combos can be unique but the end result of like all right uh kamehameha versus a final uh, big bang attack it's both down forward a yeah that's it um wolf fang fist is going to be maybe down down back y and then the volleyball attack from Tien will be down down back Y. Mm-hmm. Like it's there isn't a lot of variety in the combo. So like if you go from we'll say Mortal Kombat or Injustice Two, where like there's literally a sequence of buttons you have to press to do one move, and then the guy's juggling, and then you can go to it. You're not gonna get that. So you might get frustrated because then a button masher could thrive in this domain. Yeah. So for our un- unreleased Injustice video, that was just <laughs> ended up being a, a total massacre. Mess. Yeah. Um, from that video, I, we all learned that, well, I think a lot of us knew I am, I'm probably the biggest out of everybody yeah. into fighting games. Yeah. Um, and it's the thing I've noticed about Dragon Ball Z. First of all, the game looks fun as hell. Yeah, it is. I haven't played it personally, but it's like, I really want to, yeah. I want to try it. Um, but th- when it, when it came to Injustice in Mortal Kombat is you'd look at combos online and it's like, these are the strings that you want to know for your basic level, like Aaron Black or something like yeah. that. And the basic one is BBAA backward or down back Y <laughs> to an uppercut, which you need to jump up and hit him down. Yeah. And then you have to hit a BBBBB Y combo. Don't do another B else that ends the combo. And then it's just on and on. And then you look at it and you're like, this makes no sense. And then you see somebody do it in a, in like a tournament play. Yeah. And it's like fucking magnificent. Well, Where, what's nice too, yeah. um, well, so the, the thing also with those combos with, with Injustice 2 or MK10 and M- MKX is, I mean, it's the MK10. Same thing. It's the same thing. It's the 10th. You know, I mean, the fight community. <laughs> Sorry. Piece of shit. <laughs> um, it, it's that when you do these combos, you can't just quickly do in succession, press all these buttons. You actually have to follow the animation of the moves because if you do it too early, you don't actually do the, you don't do whatever the fucking get over here. Or if you do it too late, you'll just do a, eh, and that's it. You actually have to follow the flow of animation. So you can't just go like, and then the combos. And you may, you may memorize the entire pattern of the game, mm-hmm. of, the, of that move set. But if you don't do it at the right pace, you're fucked. Yeah, there's actually, just making me think about when you said like to get over here. There's this crazy tech you can do in, um, uh, in MKX with Scorpion. Yeah, yeah. Where if you can land, if you can land this, it's like a mid hit combo. Okay. And you'll learn a lot from watching people play. If you're not doing your combo string, you're always blocking. Because you can't let them start theirs, and you got to be able to go, be able to react, yeah. go up or down, because people can do yeah. mix-ups and stuff. Um, so there's this one where if you hit a mid hit, you can land this combo where you punch him a bunch of times, teleport, land the same combo on him, and at the end of that combo, you do the get over here, and then do the same combo, teleport, oh same combo, but end that with like basically um, uh, a command grab. Okay. Which is like you know a normal grab is like pressing LB, a command grab is like pressing like down away towards A yeah. or something like that. And if you land that, then you land like this combo. It does like 40% damage, something ridiculous like so that. So pretty much you destroy the guy within the first five seconds. Oh, yeah. I learned I learned a lot of shit. Oh, man. It's, I had um, – I, I used to be – I used to love fighting games because of the competitiveness, just yeah. playing with uh, friends and stuff. Um, and then when, when I got more into the games, it's – you realize that learning the YYX combo – is nothing. Yeah. Knowing how to do that one hit combo is nothing yeah. compared to being able to. I remember this one. I'm trying to think of like I can't even remember the 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 button mapping for it. Yeah. yeah. But I I still have this combo I can do with Aaron Black. That's literally like it's like a down hit to a top hit to a stun to an uppercut to shooting that person in the air and jumping down and hitting them off the ground so they bounce. Okay. And then sliding, keeping them in the air and doing it's. And it's ridiculous. I it's I won a lot of games just by knowing some of the simple combo oh, stuff man. like that. 
So with Dragon Ball Fighters, um, you could still technically do that. Yeah. But you know how in again in Justice Two, Mortal Kombat, maybe, uh, they're like they're more. It's I would call line. them. I'd call them the Western, the we- Western influenced fighting yeah. games compared to like Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Those are more of the Eastern. Yeah. Um, uh, so well, what's what's nice about this is uh, you you can like I said you can you can juggle and you can do all these crazy things yeah but it 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 shares this one thing where you can get a combo breaker right mm-hmm. but the only difference is in Dragon Balls and Dragon Ball Fighters is that there it's in, like so in MKX or Injustice Two you have two combo breakers and that's it yeah as far as I can tell in this you can do that you can combo break as many times as you can as long as you block the the first hit. Okay. Uh, you could also use this. Uh, I, I I don't know what they call it now, but in the old Dragon Ball games, uh, fighting games, they call it like the burst limit, where like you freak out and turn red and stuff, and like you become like invulnerable or you could stop a combo midway in its path. Yeah, so you can do that once per turn, as far as I can tell. But what makes this game super unique, and I guess it's the Guilty Gears and uh, the Capcom versus Marvel approach, mm-hmm. is you're tagging your partners. I thought I wasn't gonna like that at first. I like the idea of just like, all right, I'm Goku. Okay, cool. Goku's gonna fight Cell. Cool. Everything's great. But the idea of, like, I can choose to do a mega attack or I can do a super attack. And the super attack, he'll do, like, a crazy, we'll say, like, dragon, like super dragon fist. He knocks the guy into the air. You press the left bumper or the left trigger at the right time. Fucking, here comes Vegeta. Bang, 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 attack. Cool. If you plan enough or if you have enough energy, like enough key gauge, you can then get your third person to come in. And then you'll say, if you have Yamcha, so, uh, Wolfang's fist, pop, 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 pop. So, like, those combos that you were talking about starts adding up to those all into all those. But what's amazing is if you plan it right, you can hit your first super attack with like Goku or or, or Gohan. Yeah. He's now free to move around while the other two are still attacking. So you can then move up to the opponent and just start wrecking some shit, and then set it up for your next super. And then t- like, oh my god, it's so there's a lot of fun. a lot of tech that is like yeah, it's like you got to get into the game and realize that this has its own. Maybe it doesn't have the mainstream combo stuff like yeah. that. You got to learn your own. Yeah, it's Plus, not playing by it. Like you said, it looks so nice. Fucking, I go Goku. I use my ultimate attack. Fucking, he starts doing this. Turns Super Saiyan 3. Pops up behind your character. He does an instant transmission. He's behind you. Bang! Fucking Super Kamehameha. Holy shit! <laughs> Looks fucking amazing. You go to, you go to, you go to uh, uh, Vegeta. Vegeta just stands in front of you. Fucking, take this, you bastard! Fucking Final Flash, giant beams. And oh my god. It's just so gratifying to yeah. watch and then you can still do which is my favorite that they put it back in and it's done right because i'm a big fan of dragon ball uh Bodokai, the original like playstation 2 xbox genre uh 360 fighting uh, game which was like it's a 3d 2d fighting environment you know yep. what i mean you yep. can go up to there you're still facing each other and if you rotate you're still facing versus the tenkaichi and the newer subs universe where like you could fly around and yeah. like no attacks will hit like so like if someone does a fucking command man all you got to do is I'm behind you now. Yeah. And that's it. I hate that shit. It drives me nuts. I love the fucking face-to-face fighting style. But you, they have the classic of like, pop, pop, pop. You can send them flying. They go flying this way. You press, we'll say like, Y and B. You pop up behind them. Bang! You hit them. They go flying back. You can do it again. Pop up behind them again. And if they don't do anything fast enough, you can either hit them again or just fucking super them in the back. Oh, it's so fun. It, bring, it brings back all of like the nerdiness of being yeah. like a Dragon Ball fan back in the day. Exactly right. And you feel so fucking young and so good because you remember these things. And mm. it's just, oh, God. Justin, I got bad news for you, though. What up? I never watched Dragon Ball when I was a kid. I mean, you weren't even <laughs> born. Well, yeah. I mean, I still feel like a majority of my age range, though, watched Dragon Ball. Though I know a yeah. lot of people that... Yeah, that's usually their first intro to anime. Yeah. It's like Dragon Ball Z, for especially in your generation, it's Dragon Ball Z. Yeah. For me, it was the intro of Dragon Ball, the original series. And then, because like, back in the day, back in the 90s, like late 90s, when you got the anime that you that they were airing to you now, it was anime that you were getting back in, that, that they produced back in 1980, 88. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was never anything new. So when I was watching Dragon Ball Z, I'd like, I think it ended probably... I think the series probably ended around 2000, 2002 or say we'll say something like that, 2003 maybe. Okay. The series originally ended in Japan in 1998. Mm-hmm. So like some people just watch the, 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 the original Japanese dub and they'll, they'll do their subtitles and that's how they got, they, they, they would spoil things for you, right? Mm-hmm. I was never one that liked, I don't like the Japanese dub of, of DBZ or Dragon Ball or GT, even though GT is a fucking bastard child that does not have the right to live. Okay, so Dragon Ball Z actually ended in 1996. 
Oh, there you go. 86. And Dr- Dragon Ball ended 89. Wow. And then Dragon Ball Z Kai ended yeah. 2015. That was the new one. Yeah, right so now. that's so if anyone's wondering what the hell that is, so Dragon Ball, did it, is it Dragon Ball Kai or Dragon Ball Z Kai? Dragon Ball Z Kai. Yeah, so Dragon Ball Z Kai, pretty much what it is, is just a remastering of Dragon Ball Z. They remaster like the, the look of it and stuff. Mm-hmm. They kind of make it, add a little bit of flair to it, maybe make it more smooth in the animation department. But what they really do in Dragon Ball Z Kai a lot of the time is they take out a lot of the filler episodes of Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah? So, like, as an example, this is the most famous example. Goku's doing this, and he's doing the spirit bomb, and he's doing the spirit bomb for, like, seven fucking episodes. Oh. So, I don't think they, I don't know if they do it in this, in Dragon Ball Z Kai, but that's my example. Instead of it being seven episodes of him doing this, it's maybe two. And then he throws the bomb. Yeah, that right? was always, that was always. It was because the one show I had some exposure to didn't really watch was um, Pokemon. And Pokemon had a lot of those long-winded storylines and stuff, which yeah. I don't mind long storylines in anime or anything like yeah. that. It's, it's when nothing progresses in the story. When yeah. At the first thing, Squirtle looks hurt, and then at the end of the episode, nothing has happened because there's so many stupid subplots that yeah. keep getting thrown in that have no relevancy. Yeah. Or and like, then Team Rocket's there, but they're not even fighting anyone. They're just like, ah, fuck you, Squirtle. Yeah, or it's like, or it's like oh, Ash is going back home because he needs to train for the Elite Four for the, the Indigo Tournament. Yeah. Cool! And then it's like 10 episodes of him at home. His mom be like, Ash, I want you to cut the lawn. Venusaur, go or use cut. And like Razor Leaf and they'll cut the grass and shit. And like, that's a fucking episode. Are you fucking kidding me right now? I just imagine like you like being like, I don't know how old you had been when like Pokemon. Because Pokemon was like 90s too, right? Uh, Pokemon, I remember that. So that would have been, no, it would have been 92. That would have been like 90. Fuck, I would have been in third grade. Yes, yeah, so you would have still been young. But I, st- I just like the thought yeah. of like young Justin being like, what the fuck? This doesn't do anything yeah. for the story. Well, back then, I'm just like, yay, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this is Venusaur. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, yes. <laughs> fuck, I can beat to this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I was a young Harvey Weinstein with Pokemon. Oh, man. <laughs> Never that. claim that you were a young <laughs> Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, of course not. But Actually, I saw something with I. Okay, you can finish. I'll I'll talk about it after. Okay. Well, I was just gonna say it depends because I was about the segue. That was my segue into the Uma Thurman news that you sent over my way. Oh, okay. Well, real quick, just yeah, to, close it up. I watched. I watched. Um, it was like a Jimmy Kimmel video about like his like fake acting school or something. Okay. It was something. It was. Just, it, was it was genuinely like pretty funny. It was just saying actors get tortured by Jimmy Kimmel. Oh God. Um. And just, you know, he's got like that feud with Matt Damon. Yeah, yeah. The entire time, he just makes Matt Damon play a lamp. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, there's a part with Hi- Harvey Weinstein, and like immediately when Harvey Weinstein comes on, I'm just like my skin like. So this is an older. Skin, yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like it's like 2012 or something like that. Yeah. And then at that he comes on, and then he says something about like, well, if, if you want to be, if you want to get into this business, you have to talk to Jimmy. I'm like, oh, I bet that's what you say when someone wants to get into this business. Yeah. It's like it was, just, it was so uncomfortable. By seeing Jimmy, him. he means. It. Dick. Yeah. Ah, oh, God. But yeah, we can talk about the yeah. The so Uma Thurman Liv, thing. You had sent me an article, or you talked about it yesterday, I think. It was yeah, yesterday. and I imagine you just like looked up. Yeah, the yeah I looked it up real quick um, about Uma Thurman speaking about uh, Harvey Weinstein and Quentin Tarantino. Yes. Uh, I found two articles. I found one from the AV Club, uh, which she I, she had a, she had like a big statement and stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I saw that one, and then I saw the editorial from the New York Times, which I think is the one that she spoke in the most. Yes, but she also, or not, maybe not her, but a lot of people did not like the editor or the writer of For the, the New article. York Times? Yeah. Yeah, because he. The phrasing was like. He, he, so I was actually going to talk about that. Yeah. It drove me nuts. So I was reading it, and first of all, the, the, it's an opinion piece. It clearly, when you go to the side, it says, like, this is an opi- uh, because, op-ed, opinion yeah. editorial. Not only does it have what she said, it also has the. The editor's input. Yeah. And the issue, the reason why I have the I have an issue with it was a. It's a tragic. It's a, it's it's a fucking terrible thing what happened. Any of these things that happened to any women with involving Harvey Weinstein or any fucking or Tarantino or Tarantino or anyone in a higher position who take advantage of that and yep. prey upon men, women, kids, whatever. I don't fucking care. It's disgusting. It is. Uh, but the, the the way that it was worded at the beginning, and this is me defending Quentin in a weird way. The initial representation of it made it sound like he was as bad as Harvey Weinstein, which made me think, oh, he perversed himself onto fucking no. onto Uma. 
which wasn't the fact. And also, the writing was fucking douchey as hell. Yeah, it was. Using these big, fancy words. And shit. I'm like, dude, you don't... Look, I understand. You're the New York Times, and you're a big fucking big shot. Ooh, look at you. Like, I said the word big twice. You got a problem with that? Yeah. <laughs> fucking, this ain't no essay, bitch. <laughs> but, like, it was this moment of, like, you don't need to fancy up something terrible that happened. Just go to the facts. And if you have an opinion, try not to sound too much like a fucking sleazeball when you're doing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, even with opinion pieces when you're writing for anything yeah you have to be you have to be unbiased unless it is the point of the article is to attack somebody yeah. or something which it felt and like that was a smear paint yes yeah, it, it paint. was and honestly i don't mind because i like it's, it's hard for me i loved tarantino yeah. Yeah. i love Tar- i still i think there is some sort of separation separating the art from the artist yeah i still think tarantino makes fantastic movies i think his movies are great but he's but he's, he's not- a piece of shit though yeah. he's he he didn't do anything overt he didn't do anything sexual or anything with yeah. uma thurman or any of the actresses he's worked with but he he psychologically manipulates so, manip- bleh, manipulates yeah them. so uh, we're going to talk about that right now. Uh, very quickly, I'm going to just go check the computer. Yeah, I'll keep them entertained. Okay, cool. I'll and start. Then, I'll start reading off uh, when animes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, you do that, and when we get back, we'll get back on the Uma Thurman talk. Okay. <laughs> All right. So Thundercats premiered in 2011. No, dude. Well, the new the reboot yeah, did. Yeah, you what you said, son. Dude, Thunder, Thunder, the reboot of Thundercats only lasted a season. Oh, Naruto's been going on for a while, though. Two, ten years of Naruto Shippuden. Or Shippuden. I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Probably. Don't rip me apart comments. I'm just... I'm sorry. I don't really know a lot about Naruto. But I love this one guy. His name's like Kakashi Hitaki. He just looks sick. He's got like an like eye patch and shit. Wait, there was a Naruto before it? Who was in it before Naruto? Is there still Kakashi? No, where's... Oh, oh, yeah, there is a Kakashi. Never mind. Sorry, sorry, audience. What's just... Wait. Oh, okay, this is a subsection of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Not JoJo's Bizarre Adventure itself. Pokemon Digital Monsters. Oh, wait, that's Digimon. I just said Pokemon Digital Monsters instead of Digimon Digital <laughs> Monsters. I don't know what's Pokemon, going on with me. Digital monsters, digital monsters, Pokemon. <laughs> digital monsters, Pokemon. Oh my God, Pikachu's the Digimon into Pokemon. God, I hate, I hate Digimon. Just speak, I hate it because I was never into Pokemon or Digimon or anything. Yep. I was a Yu-Gi-Oh guy. Really? Yep. Um, so you're a. Li- well, again, it makes sense because your age. Yep, yep. But I said one friend that this was years. I I met him in grade nine. Years after we were all over yep. that stuff. We just talked about how much he loved Digimon. I was like, Digimon, <laughs> Digimon's so dumb. He's like, what are you talking about? He's like, Agumon. And I'm like, what does Agumon turn into? He's like, well, eventually he turns into a metal Agumon. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what the fuck? You fucking nerd. What have you been watching? Oh, my God. So what were you curious about? Naruto? There was a Naruto before Naruto? Yes. Yeah. I didn't. I, there's, well, Naruto Shippuden. Or yeah, which like is that. the one where he's an, he's an adult. Yeah, that's the one I knew. I yeah, didn't there was know. one before that when he was a kid. Yeah. And it was terrible. It was actually okay, except for the fact that in the English dub... Ooh, that English dub. The voice acting was fine, except they had the main character, who could be from the original Japanese series too, had a saying. Every three fucking sentences, it was, Believe it! Believe it! Believe it! I'm gonna beat you! Whatever your fucking name is, believe it! I'm gonna eat this chow mein! Believe it! I'm gonna go take a shit! Believe it! Oh, it was that every fucking it's time. Hard to listen to. Yeah. Oh, I. It's. Uh, I don't know. I've. I just. I, I. have a hard time getting into anime now. I feel it's. I, it's. I don't know why. It's just that sometimes the animation style and the thing. Another thing I was gonna say was sometimes they just pick the worst voice actors for English yeah. dubs. Yeah. I don't mind Ash's voice actor for the Pokemon English dub, but sometimes, man. Oh, Doc. Oh no! <laughs> it's like 
Where do you get these voices from? Yeah, I know. It's always like Japanese women who are doing the voices and stuff. So that, 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 that's what drives me banana sandwich when people are like, this is just going back to Dragon Ball Z before we go back to the Uma thing. Real quick, it's like, oh my god, the Japanese voice cast is so much better than the American. I'm like, are you fucking Goku's kidding Goku's like, eh. No, it's not even that. Like, if he sounded like Mark Simpson, I'd be better off with it. Uh, <laughs> homie. <laughs> <It's-> <laughs> That was a lot better than I thought yeah, I could that was do. pretty good, man. It, it, was, it was the <laughs> fact that in the fucking Japanese version, American one, Goku sounds like a dude. Straight up, like a, a dude his age, yeah. right? The Japanese one, it's he sound, and this is no fucking jab at the, at the voice actor, but he sounds like a fucking, like a 12-year-old girl. He's like, uh, fucking yeah. Goku's like 49 years old according to the lore. Why does he, why does he talk like that? Like, I can't even do <laughs> that. I can't go that high of a pitch sound. And people are like, you're going to tell me that's better than fucking Goku? The American one? You're fucking crazy. Yeah. It's, some people are so stupid, but it's like, oh, the, 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 the original, which was actually done in Japan 30 years ago, is actually better. And then you look at the, the new one, and it's like, well, it's not the case. No. There's, there's a lot of cases where it is. Like, yeah. First one comes to the top of my head, RoboCop. New one, nowhere as good. No. Like, the old one is cheesy. and the, But it's meant to be like that. Yeah, and, like, RoboCop's is like, <laughs> you can this walk giant robot, yeah. fake robot, like... <laughs> I, you are under arrest, yeah. and it's Dead just, or alive, you're coming with me. It's, like, so fucking yeah. classic. And then you look at the new one, and it's, like... He's running, like, a mile, like 30 miles per hour. Don't it is me, don't. RoboCop. Yeah. I don't have a fun catchphrase because yeah. I'm gritty. I That's my that's my least favorite I have thing. all the emotions of a human, that's, even though <laughs> I am part robot. That's what I hate about yeah. all remakes and new movies is, like, people like grittiness. People like it when it's dark. You yeah. we remember Taken... People like that, and it's like, no, we like fun, well done movies. Yeah, stop making it gritty. That's why Taken Two and Three flopped. Stop. I dude, I saw Taken Two. It was why? bad. Yeah. Uh, some girl wanted to see it, so I was like, yeah, sure. Are you trying not to say Haley? <laughs> it wasn't Haley. Okay. <laughs> Haley has good enough taste that she would she would not want to see Taken Two. Okay. All right, going back to the Uma Thurman thing. Uh, we can't. We didn't really talk about at all. What happened? We just talked. Yeah, about the, we just the, like the, talked, we talked about, about the, the the article, and that's it. The shitheads and the the editor. And yeah. Stuff. So pretty much uh, in the New York Times and AV Club uh, story, they talk about uh, and Uma Thurman talks herself about uh, in quotes her interactions with Harvey and Quentin Tarantino. Now the ones with Harvey Weinstein at first were nice. They 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 they, <laughs> they seemed themselves. They thought. Sorry, I just I opened up the article and the first sentence is yes, Uma Thurman is mad, and then the second one was she has been raped. It's like which one do you think is more important? Yeah, like, yeah. The Uma Thurman, like yeah. Ugh. So in the article, she talks about how like she thought both Quentin Harvey and her were like this trio for for Miramax, mm-hmm. who like they were the the they were the ones who really helped start the the company. They they boosted up their careers with like by helping each other out. Obviously, Uma with Quentin through Pulp Fiction and the two Kill Bills. Yep. Uh, Harvey obviously profited greatly from that because he kept on taking these independent filmmakers, your Robert Rodriguez, Kevin Smith, Quentin Tarantino, all these guys, and like gave them money and a platform to showcase their art. I, mean, I just want to say fuck, fuck Harvey Weinstein. I can't like I looking know, at stuff; it just fucking gets yeah. under my skin. I know, I know. Uh, and anyways, the with the Harvey Weinstein situation, it was it became one of like. Be like, oh hey, how's it going? Yeah. Like, hey, how are you? Yeah. Or like, hey, come to my hotel. Ah, room. it's like, oh. Yeah, it's like those moments of just pure inc- like uncomfortableness. And in Harvey's defense, it's like, oh, I thought we were being flirtatious because in pictures we were standing close to each other. So I thought she wanted it. It's never. Fu- <laughs> God, it's not. Fucking consent is not a hard concept. <laughs> If somebody doesn't want something, don't give it to them. It did, we did it for our videos, our streeter videos. We made them yeah, say, this geez. is my name and I give consent to this video. And boom, then everything's golden. If they were to come back and say, don't do it, boom, we would we would tear it down I, because they said no. I remember I saw this, I saw this, um, it was like an article and it was like, it was like how to prevent rapes from happening or something like that. And you think it's going to be this thing like saying like, we're more, um, Wear more less revealing clothes and stuff like that, and it's just like it's like the first one is a don't rape people. <laughs> B if you feel like you're going to rape somebody, don't. <laughs> it's like it's not hard. Just yeah. Don't. <sighs> not a difficult concept. Don't be a dirtbag. I fucking I hate it. Like yeah. honestly, go just go fucking jerk off, man. That hurts nobody. Yeah, like, in the potted plant. 
It's okay, not okay. Okay, jerk off by yourself, not in front of other people. There you go. Unless they want to see it. It's that consent. Ben, consent. It all comes back to consent. It's and it's not the Louis C.K. version of jerking off, being like, "Is this okay?" No, you don't jerk <laughs> off and then ask. Yeah. You ask first, then jerk it later. That's the cycle. Ask, yes, go. Ask, no, do it alone. It's fucking, there's your split path right there. I don't, I don't understand how like it's, it's always been even from when I'm a kid. Yep. When it's you, you learn when you're when somebody says stop doing that to yeah. stop doing that. Whether it's, it's bullying, kissing, pushing, and anything verbal exchanges. It's how fucking immature do you have to be not to realize that and not to, like, <laughs> like sexual assaulting somebody is not a problem with. It's not you're not mentally ill. You're fucked up in the brain because you made a decision yeah. by that. And you think you rationalized it to yourself that it's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's your. Yep. You can't blame other people for that shit. Yeah, no, 100%. it's it's the one it's the one thing it'll get me heated by anything mm -hmm. if if when people defend it or like the thing that like literally got me fucking hyped was the whole Larry Nassar trial yeah, that yeah. was getting put oh. away for like 175 years. And the dad. Yeah, and the dad uh, thing. Because I mean, yeah. everybody was like, everybody was yeah. like, if I was a dad, I'd fucking beat yeah. his ass too. Well, we'll talk about that. I just want to finish up with the Uma thing. Very quickly. Man, Sorry, it's getting, I, this is it's, very serious. I'm fine with this. But yeah, yeah you got, you got it's been getting really serious. off tangent too from the Uma yeah. thing. So the, the with the Uma thing, so Harvey Weinstein, you know, tried to sexually aggress himself onto her. She said no. Um, I don't know if anything happened with the exchanges. It, I, it's it was like a continuing pattern yeah. of him doing it, her saying no, and then yeah. him being like, oh, him being a sexual predator nonstop. Yeah, it's yeah. basically it's the same same level except. Uma Thurman kind of shut it down. Yeah. Where some people, she was, she had enough power because she was in these movies and stuff yeah. that she could do it without it being a problem. Where a lot of the other actresses were just starting, and yeah. if you did, he literally could ruin your career. Yeah. Oh, 100%. It just took one word from Harvey and you were done. <sighs> now, the Quentin Tarantino aspect was not a sexual thing. Um, it, it's actually, some could conceive it as worse. Uh, I think it's, it's bad. I don't know if it'd be worse. Uh, he, psychologically manipulated uh, Uma to do one particular thing that's highlighted in the New York Times article. Of, <clears throat> there was a stunt for Kill Bill, I think it was volume one. I, I don't know which the, one it The is. car? The car incident. Yeah. Um, where she was going to be driving in a car going about, they say 40 miles per hour, which I don't know what that is in kilometers. It's fast. It's all I know. Yeah, it's, it's almost up to 100. Yeah, down a winding dirt road. It wasn't a straight road, even though Quinn's like, no, don't worry about it. It's a straight road. It's a straight road. You'll be fine. You'll do it. You're going to do it. Yeah. Because he thought the shot needed to have the actress driving the vehicle. Uma didn't like it because she said that there's some safety concerns. The, 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 the seat wasn't drilled down to the bottom properly. Um, it wasn't a straight road. It was a winding road. It was dirty. Like, it was full of dirt. So any slip and slides is... Can cause like will happen and she'll slip and hit something she was afraid of. I see the footage, which apparently Miramax kept hidden for years, refused to let it out and give it to Uma because they didn't want her to sue them. Yeah. So they wanted her to sign a, an agreement being, we'll release this footage to you if you promise not to sue us. She never did that, so the footage never came out until just recently. I guess the footage either got leaked or they gave it out now. Yeah. Because now they want to make Miramax wants to look like the good guy in this situation. Yeah, they're going to be like, well, we weren't a part of it. Yeah. We're, we're, we're this is the monstrosity that took place that we had no idea or whatever the fuck they're going to say. Yeah. But anyways, this shot that required Uma Thurman was literally the back of a car, her driving. You can kind of see Uma's face. In the rear view mirror, which could have been any fucking blonde stunt woman. But Quentin had to have it his way. Uma felt that her trust was broken that day, because I remember reading from the article, because she thought that she helped, she had a better res like, level of respect or communication with Quentin because of all the stuff they've done together, to excuse me, done together, because Quentin said that it was an Ota Muse relationship. Where like he fed off of her and she would help him create things and like they they together they made this incredible art. He told he whipped like it's gonna sound bad after we were just talking about the uh, the Harvey Weinstein thing, but he whipped out his director dick. He's like, no, you listen to me. This is what's happening. Yeah, and I have a lot of problems with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which then caused obviously you can see where the story's going. She's driving the car and then she she worms because it's a dirt fucking road and she smashes into a tree. Luckily, she's not hurt as far as i can tell like there's probably a bruising but she's all shook up 
the people lift her out of the car and stuff. And then there's Quentin over there uh, onto the side. You're okay. Everything's going to be okay. Doing that shit. Yeah. And it's like, dude, I, you know, you, you can't make yourself look like the good guy in this situation, especially after this story being released. It's bananas. <sighs> it's, it's, it's the thing about this industry is you hear some directors are crazy and stuff like that. And it's like, it's, I have a real issue with putting art above people. Yeah. I love well done movies, but there are the one immediately when I was talking, I was talking to Haley about this. Um, just like, just like me and her talking. Yeah. And I immediately said, I was like, I was like, you don't need to go to extremes to create a good performance. It's, you don't, I, the, the immediately I brought up is when I look at Kill Bill, great movie, fantastic movie, but Edgar Wright has put out better movies where he didn't torture somebody to make it. Yeah. Because he's, he, no, he can get a response out of an actor through just trusting somebody and putting your belief in somebody yeah. and find other outlets. Don't. Don't fucking jam them in a dangerous car and make them drive down a dirt road. Especially after they said they're not comfortable with it. Yes. Like in any other work environment, any other work environment, if your boss told you to do something and you felt it was unsafe, by law, you're allowed to be like, I'm not doing this because I feel this is unsafe. I feel like I will injure myself. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a lot of other stuff that, yeah. small stuff that was happening, like really weird stuff. When when there's scenes in Kill Bill where if Uma got spit on or something, yeah. Quentin Tarantino would want to do like rehearse it with him doing it. Yeah, him actually spitting in her face. Yeah, or yeah. like choking her, like doing stuff like that. So he obviously okay. So Quentin Tarantino is a fucked up dude. Yep, we've all known this, but we never thought it was to this. I extent. didn't never. I thought he was just kind of like you know He's crazy. He's a kooky dude. He's Tim Burton. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. But no, he has he has he has issues, and I think that he has a lot of weird power issues. He's like, he's one of those guys that really likes to be in power, yeah. and I think. I think this was another one of those incidents where it was a shot he wanted and he knew he could do it with a stunt double, but his actor wasn't doing what he wanted. Yeah. So he's going to keep pushing and pushing. And that's, it's a crazy, it's a crazy way to live. I don't, I, I don't understand people like this. I mean, obviously I don't have the same mindset. I oh. never ever would pressure anybody to do anything they don't want to. And I would never do it out of, out of power or anything perfect, like that. Perfect example would have been our mini narrative, the one that I, I, I like that I acted in for yours. Uh, this never got. This was a part of the technical snap whip, so that got cut off. I think. I think. Just because of like time restraints yeah. and stuff, it was like it was it was like you coming out of a shower. Yeah. Like, like not not, not straight out. It was like yeah. out of the room. Yeah. And then you like I'm like oh so what happens? He's like oh you're gonna come out of the shower and then if you're gonna grab a shirt you're gonna put it on whatever. And I'm like oh so I'm not gonna have a shower. I'm not, I'm not gonna have a shirt on when I get out of the out of the bathroom. He's like, and lives like. Well, you don't have to even want to. It's fine. Like, totally fine. Totally accept. It's like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, no, I, I don't give a shit. Yeah, you're just like, kind of, you're just like asking. Yeah, I'm like, it, like if that's what's happening. The thing is, happening. I didn't, it didn't even go past my mind. Yeah. I didn't even think about it. I yeah. was just like, I was kind of like, I literally was in the director mindset of like, this is my vision. I'll yeah. make it happen. And then something came up where it's like, well, what if they don't want to do it? I'm like, well, I mean, whatever. You can't, you can't force something. It's, <sighs> it's only like in a contract. Quentin has, I have the right to, while rehearsal, spit on you, choke yeah. you, slap you. Like, it, that's not a thing. That's not a fucking... A nudity scene could be a contract clause thing. Where, yes. like, in this contract, you are writing that you will... You're giving consent that on this on this scene, on this day, that you will go nude. That's a totally different thing. Which actors and actresses still have the right to try to bow out of yeah, that. Yeah, they, they can say they don't... Yeah. Again, though, they don't have to do it. It's, yeah. more of a, it's more of a thing saying, like, hey, this is when this is going to yeah. happen. Are you comfortable with doing it? If you're not, then we don't want to sign you on for the movie. Yeah. Um, Which, it's, it, that's a shitty silent power play done by companies or directors or whatever uh but it, ultimately it's it's always down to the this this okay this i know you want to call this episode what pop my pump pump what is it pop my pimple bro or something like that yeah it's like pop pop my butt bro or yeah, pop my butt, bro. i think this video is just gonna be we give consent <laughs> like i think that's gonna be the title of this fucking episode uh. but just for the fact that i want this is for students of fanshawe students of western students of any fucking where I'm a 29-year-old man. Lives a 19-year-old boy. The cute boy. Thank you. <laughs> but <laughs> he's a young man. <laughs> uh, but it's the idea of like between our 10-year gap, we both know, and everyone should fucking know this. You do not do anything without consent. It's, it's again. It's I I can't I I can't understand people. Yeah. I can't. 
It's such an easy concept. I don't care how much you wanted to have sex. If somebody doesn't want to have sex with you, you don't do it. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I know that this is a little bit more of a heavier topic, especially right off the bat. It's, uh, it's something that gets me rattled, it's, though. It's for the both of us. It's the same. I, and I've seen this shit in jiu-jitsu back at... Uh, we had a couple of problems before at, at the academy I used to train, and I got reg- regulated very, very fast. Mm-hmm. Um, where, uh, where sometimes we'd, have, we'd pair up with the opposite sex. In jiu-jitsu, that is not a big fucking deal. Yeah, because no, you're all. you're both there to learn a certain thing. And you're both and fighters. Yeah. You both you both agreed to yeah. this. Yeah, you learn you learn that you will trust your partner uh, to not be perverted and to not hurt you. Because I trained with people that were five feet. Yeah, that's it. They weighed like ninety pounds, soaking wet. So I knew if I really wanted to, I'd just be like, ah, yeah, bang, you like I could just flip them around and shit. Right? I wouldn't do that if I went for a choke or if I went for. Uh, for very quickly, if I needed to post on their on their body to do like to set up for an arm bar, traditionally you would go around here. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what? Guess what women have right here? Hmm. They don't like being pushed there or touched there, which I completely understand. You go up here, you go to the collarbone, and you don't put the weight on to throw dominance. You just do it fast enough, bang, you're good to go. It's yeah. shit like that. We had situations where someone was getting a little bit too handsy. They got talked to. They were out banned. Like because that anywhere oh. in this world there is no tolerance without consent. Yeah, that's, it's it it blow, it it boggles my mind. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it, I I hate. I, you it's, can quote us on it. it. It's a thing I hate about this world is that mental illnesses do exist, yep. and they do change the way people perceive things. But it's it's hard to say at the end of the day that you're not the one making the decision. Yeah. So it. I don't know. I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. I, 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 you're, an, you're an ass. You're a fucking, you're a piece of shit if you do it. Yeah. Honestly, like, honestly, God, if anybody did it to anybody I loved, yeah. that's a person I'm willing to kill. Hell, even, Hell, like, easy. Even if someone I didn't like that happened to them, I don't give a shit. That, that, that doesn't happen. That shouldn't happen to anyone. No. Even to my worst enemy, I would not wish something like that upon Hell them. Hell no. It's, yeah. All right. To get out of this slightly more depressing uh, thing, but kind of... I'm tilted. More. I'm tilted, but I'll be good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about movies, funny enough. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, What's I think... What's your favorite Harvey <laughs> Weinstein? <laughs> more arts movie. Um, Variety released um, the all the movies being nominated for the Academy Awards. That's playing on March 4th. Okay. Um, I'm going to read you the, the, the big ones. And I've, I wanted to get a big a bunch of people for this, but, you know... <laughs> Two dudes who love movies is good enough for me. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm going to read out the best picture. I want you to tell me what you think is going to win and what you think got snubbed. Okay. And we're going to do that for best picture. This is for 17? Yes, for 2017, right? Yeah, yeah. For all the, well, yeah, because at, at at I'm pretty sure they have like a end date, cutoff date for their nominations. Mm-hmm. So it's for 2017. Um, so we're going to go best picture. Wait, I just got to get, I got to bring yeah, up 2017 yeah. movies because I always forget good. which came out this year in 2016. We'll do that. We'll do best picture, lead actor, actress, um, supporting actor and actress, and then director. Okay. All right. So we're going to start off with, you know, we're going to start off with director. Okay. So for best director, what they have here, they have Dunkirk, Chris Nolan. Fair. Get Out, Jordan Peele. Very fair. Uh, Lady Bird by Greta Gerwig. I have not watched it, but I've heard amazing things about same, it. Same, same. I can't really give an yeah. opinion on that one. Uh, Phantom Thread, Paul Thomas Anderson. Um, I've heard that it's actually not. It's one of his weaker uh, really? PTA films. People just love it because it's PTA. Yeah. Uh, and The Shape of Water, Guillermo del Toro, which again I've heard amazing things about, and I need to watch that fucking movie. Uh, to be honest, I <laughs> I love Guillermo 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 del Toro. Guillermo del Toro. Love him. But you don't think just, he belongs on this list? No, no, I think he does. Okay. I think he's a fantastic director, and I heard only amazing things with yeah. Shape of Water. It's just I can't get over his he has an obsession obsession with 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 fish people. <laughs> he loves he's putting a Hellboy. <laughs> yeah, you lo- he's, did you see how like Hellboy's costume compared to the yeah, fish guy's it's costume? Very, very. Which one had more detail on him? <laughs> and then I I think the Shape of Water was more just an ode to. Like it's just like he loves he loves that fish monster. He loves making cool monsters and stuff. He just wanted to make an awesome monster, yeah. uh, cool monster movie. That's actually a really yeah. deep movie. Um, didn't so, see it, sadly. Okay. Um, so in the directors, which one would you say was going to win? Do uh, you want me to read them off again? Um, from what you I already seen? have the one I think's gonna win. Okay. 
and this might be a bit personal, but I also think it is deserved, okay. is Jordan Peele. For Get Out. I think first a directing job, and it was fantastic. Okay. The, the look of the movie, the story it told, and everything it meant, as long with how he worked with the actors. If you look, if you talk to any of the actors on set, yeah. they, they said he's one of the best directors they've worked with. Because he's, he's just like this nice, chill dude that's going to get his shots and get what he wants without... Like, it's literally the opposite of what I think Tarantino did. Yeah. He's, I, and I think that Get Out was phenomenal. And I think it was... I think it broke a mold in 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 the movies. Because I think I think um, uh, Dunkirk was... Dunkirk was fantastic. But Dunkirk, I felt, was just Chris Nolan being Chris Nolan. Okay. Shape of Water, again, looked fantastic. It's, but it's yeah, it's Del Toro Guillermo Del Toro movie. This is a new director who put out something we really haven't yeah. seen that much. It's not just a horror movie. It's... It's a horror movie with this huge um, commentary on racism itself. Yep. And it has interesting turns. It's directed fantastically. So that's, I think, Jordan Peele's going to win for that reason. Then again, haven't seen Lady Bird, haven't seen Shape of Water. Can't really comment on them. But um, I do not think Dunkirk was as good as Get Out was. Okay. Do you think a director was snubbed? Yes. I don't think I know who it is. It's completely personal. But it's, I understand why he's not in here, because I, I, I think I love this movie more than anybody else does in the world. I think Edgar Wright deserved a nomination at I think for Baby Driver. I think you're absolutely 100% correct. I, and I honestly think he should... He, so but between the two, I would say it's a tie. For me, it would be Get Out or Baby Driver. Really? But, I mean, come on. The direction that he took, the fact that he got the editing down to the point where, like... Musical sequences took part in action sequences. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the fact that something could have been so simple was so complicated and was so beautiful to look at. Yep. The fact that he decided not to do 100% CG fucking Fast and the Furious car wrecks. Yeah, I don't think he had any. Like practical effects galore. It is insane. It's, he, took, he took this idea that nobody saw coming yep. and created a masterpiece. Yep. So I think, I don't know if, he, I'd honestly say get out over Baby Driver. Maybe for direction style, because I think Jordan Peele just did a fantastic job with Get Out. Yeah. But I do believe he deserves a nomination. I really think he deserves a nomination. And I would, I honestly think it would be the first ever tie for Get Out and like Baby Driver. My thing is though, I know Baby Driver is going to win in other places. I'm sure the Golden Globes. I didn't watch the Golden Globes. I'm sure he picked up something over there. I no, I mean you. even in like yeah. in like these awards, he's gonna like best soundtrack's got to go to Baby Driver. I don't know what else would be on there or best score. Uh, maybe? Let's see here. Do they have best soundtrack. Yeah, uh, yeah. Give me a moment. I will. Uh, I will look that up. While I do that, uh, let's name the next one, which is uh, supporting actress. Supporting actress is over an actor. It's like I'm going from down up. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So for supporting actress, they have Mary J. Blige for. Mudbound. I want to make sure I got that right. Allison Janney and I, Tanya, Leslie Manville in Phantom Thread, Laurie Metcalf for Lady Bird, and Octavia Spencer for The Shape of Water. God, All right, Lib, what do you think? I've seen, like, one of those movies. Oh, man, I didn't, I, I didn't watch a lot of, like, you know, like the astounding, like, huge, they're like the, not the huge ones, like the huge directorial yeah, yeah. ones, sadly. So I, can't, I honestly can't give an opinion on it. I haven't seen enough to um, uh, see it. I think that from what I've seen about Lady Bird, um, Lady Bird like it seemed like it was very cast-driven. Okay. So just off a random guess, I'd say the girl from Lady Bird. Uh, so that soundtrack is not a thing. Uh, well, not in this list anyways. It, is, it deserves it. Yeah. Baby Driver should win something. Allison Janney for I, Tanya because she is Who 100%... Is she? 100% believable as that like it, it doesn't feel like that's Allison Janey at all which usually Allison Janey does a lot of comedy stuff and she's really good at that too yeah but there's something about her in I Tanya that's just oh oh yeah yeah she plays she Tanya's was, mother yeah she was crazy yeah yeah so oof. um any snubs I, Tanya on was that good. One? I don't think there's any snubs on that one I think everyone who's uh, there is pretty good let's see yeah I can't I can't really think of um any any big snubs or anything? Yeah. So sound editing, baby drivers in there. Yeah, what it win. Sound editing for sure. Uh, ooh, see that's gonna get complicated. Dunkirk, Dunkirk, and Blade Runner twenty forty nine is in there. Right, see, I'm sorry. I don't love. I don't love Blade I know, Runner. I know, as much I know, as you I know, do. I know, I know. Um, which I still, also, by I, the way, that's another snub. 
Blade Runner, yeah. Denny I think Villeneuve should be in Best Director for fucking Blade Runner. You're out of your goddamn mind. Best remake I've seen, or not remake, uh, sequel. Yeah. I've seen in a while. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sound editing also. Baby Driver's in there, and film editing. A uh, Baby Driver's in there with Jonathan Amos and Paul McLeese. Which I mean, there's no way that they they don't win for film editing. Oh, for sure. Even sound editing and film editing, they should be winning. Sound editing, they might give it to Dunkirk because Dunkirk's sound was Dunkirk's score was amazing. Yeah. Um, but, the, but but it's so original. Baby Driver's so original. Yeah. So <sighs> I would say I would say sound and video editing. I'd give it to Baby Driver. Yeah, but I would I, I would do the same. See, it sucks. There's no Mad Max this year. That's just gonna win every award. <laughs> <laughs> uh, supporting actor. Here we go. We got Willem Dafoe in the Florida Project, Woody Harrelson in Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri, or Missouri, depending where you're Ooh, from. Ooh, Woody Harrelson was good in that. There you go. Uh, Richard Jenkins in The Shape of Water, Christopher Plummer for All the Money in the World, the man who replaced uh, Kevin Spacey. In he wasn't the, even uh, in that Ridley much Scott. of the. He wasn't even in that much of the film though. In ten days, they reshot every scene. Yeah, That's I know. That's of. impressive. I know. But. And then Sam Rockwell. For three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri, Missouri, if anyone you're from. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. I don't think I, I don't. I I've heard Rockwell's almost locked in for this. Yeah. I heard I heard that Rockwell and I, I, I mean on, honestly Rockwell is an amazing actor. He is. He is. Sam Rockwell is fantastic. It's just I. It's it's again. I think it's personally that I liked Woody Harrelson's performance better because okay. I love Woody Harrelson. Hey, dude, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this is a, this becomes an opinion piece. Yes, but at the same, you know, same yeah. way, you can't, you can't, you can't like disregard what Sam Rockwell did. Fantastic job. He was one of the most liked, like in a while I've seen of yeah. not even not even the main character, but just locked into this other character in the story, and it's like it, it again, it's transforming. Oh, you don't see Sam Rockwell up there. You see that character. You see that character that you rather hate or you love. You know yeah. stuff like that. 100%. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd I'd probably say Sam Rockwell. Uh, I really, I just, I really like that movie. Like three, three, what's it? Three billboards outside of Missouri. Ebbing, Missouri, or Missouri, depending where you're from. Missouri. <laughs> yeah, I've heard people say Missouri before, mm-hmm. especially in the states. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, let's go on to lead actress. All right. We have Sally Hawkins in Shape of Water. Yeah, I do. I was going to say yeah. Shape of Water yeah. immediately. Uh, for, uh, Francis McDormand for Three Billboards Outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Which, by the way, man, holy shit. Like, Three Billboards is, like, coming up a lot. Yeah. It's like uh, Shape of Water is coming up yeah, a lot. Holy that's shit. true. Margot Robbie for I, Tanya. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to butcher this name, and I'm really sorry for this. Um, unless I could say it in French, which it might be a French name. Uh, Swartz Ronan in Lady Bird. Yeah, I know. I have no uh, idea. I'm sorry. I've never. I, I'm going to butcher that name. And Meryl Streep in The Post, lead actress. I mean, I'll be honest. I've only from the I've, trailers. The girl in the shape of water looks great. Like she, she looked like she did a well, fantastic she's a mute, job. She plays a mute character, mm-hmm. so she doesn't even get the talk. So she is purely a visual performance, which is always yep. a hard thing to fucking do. Mm-hmm. Um, I might. Hi, Tanya. <sighs> she was a fucking great Tanya Harding. Mm-hmm. So I think for this one, I think Margot might win this, but it's going to be a close call. I would love if Margot win it because I think she's an underrated actress. Yep. I think her literally being in Suicide Squad, it kind of butchered her, everyone's opinion <laughs> of her. Even though she's been in Amazing Things before. Yeah, she's her, a right? fucking great actor. Yeah. yeah. And it's I, I'd, I'd hope she wins. I think it might go to the girl from Shape of Water. Yeah. Because uh-huh. they gave her an almost impossible task and she killed it. She fell in love with a fish man. <laughs> yeah, she fell in love with a fish man. <laughs> she fell right. in love with the... Uh, who played the fish man? Oh, God. Doug Jones. This guy's ugly. She fell in love with... <laughs> she fell in love with an ugly dude. Ugly dude. All right. Um, do you have anything, any snubs in there? No? For actress? Yeah. Um, Let me just go back to my movies real quick. Sure. While you do that, I will start speaking about the lead actors. All right, we have Denzel Washington in Roman J. Israel Esquire, Gary Oldman in Darkest Hour, Daniel Kalua, Kalu, Kalua, again, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name for, Dar, uh, for Get Out, Daniel D. Lewis in Phantom Threat, and Timothée Chalamet in Call Me By Your Name. Who do you think? And got snubbed. I have a personal uh, snub in here. If you need to think, I'll say mine first. Personal f- snub? Ryan Gosling. No, I on I personally think Hugh Jackman, really for in Logan. Yeah, and you know what? Throw in support. You know what? Go back. Throw in fucking 
Uh, Patrick Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart for supporting actor. I think Logan has just got fucking snubbed in general from these awards. Yeah. yeah. I think I everyone, I think nobody looked past the surface level fact that it's a superhero movie. Yeah, they, they just at, saw that and they're like. Looked at the magnificence what it is. So much more. Uh, I honestly, I'd say, I honestly think Ryan Gosling. I think, I think he was fucking great in Blade Runner. He took me into the movie. Yeah. I think he did a great job. I think, I think Blade Runner again was overlooked a bit. So I think that's, I wouldn't, I would love to say Ansel Elgort. But I think he, he Ansel Elgort plays a little bit too much of just being like, being himself more yeah. than a performance. I do love the fact that um, uh, what Daniel Daniel Day Lewis, not Daniel Day Lewis, Daniel Kaluuya, Daniel Kaluuya got an award yeah. because Daniel Kaluuya is one of those actors that I kind of just recognize from every, thing to thing, and then you know I heard he's got this huge role in um, uh, Get Out, like Jordan Peele's movie. So, yeah. you know, I watch it and he just. He's fucking fantastic. Yeah. He he. It's one of the most real performances I think. One of the less least acted, <coughs> but like most like best acted. But for the fact that it seems like he's actually reacting to what yeah. would happen, and that's I really loved watching it. So I think he did a great job. I'm gonna show you this. What is it? The the guy who got replaced? Or the guy no, who no, replaced? no 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 no. Do you know who this is? <laughs> no. Do you know? No. No. The man that will win best actor. That is Gary Oldman, and not a fat suit. That is Gary Oldman, just Gary Oldman. Wait, like, 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 like Gary Oldman. Yeah, our Gary Oldman that we know from like The Fifth Element and uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes or Dawn, whichever the the second one was, and everything else that he's ever done, Tinker, Ta Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. That is Gary Oldman as Winston Churchill. Oh yeah, Gary Oldman's fucking winning. He is. There's no way. There's no way that he is not. That is ridiculous. Yeah, that is commitment. I love, I love Denzel too, but I don't think Denzel. No, I'm sorry. He had his he had his moment with fences. Um, I don't think he's gonna. Mm, no. Yeah, Gary. After seeing that, Gary <laughs> Oldman's gonna win. And Daniel Dan Day Lewis, he's won enough awards. Yeah, I mean, fuck Dan, Dan Day Lewis. I love him, but he's yeah, a yeah. great actor. But he's won enough. Leave yeah, him alone. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I would say Hugh Jackman should be in there. It, yeah. Yeah. The emotional fucking roller coaster ride. You go with him in Logan is. It's it, it's it matches anything else you would see from in all, in all honesty from like Daniel Day Lewis or whatever any of his movies last of, like with Last of the Mohicans or Gangs in New York and any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's oh my god, I cried in that movie, dude. I yeah. cried in Logan. It's for me. I think Hugh Jackman is. I always thought like Hugh Jackman is like oh he's just Wolverine, and then he's like well he's yeah I've seen a couple of his other movies. You see Chappie, and he's like. He's not bad in it, but it's not the best Hugh Jack performance. Yeah. But Logan, he fucking kills it. It's like, oh, this guy can act. He's not just Wolverine. Yeah, it, he's being Wolverine, yeah. and he's acting like yeah. crazy. It's unfucking real Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. All right. Best picture, which, again, I'm going to call some bullshit on this. Uh, so we'll start from the bottom, and we'll work our way up like Drake. I already, uh, I, you know, I already got I, mine picked out. I, I know. Because so, I picked him out for all the fucking awards. Uh, three it's billboards great. outside Ebbing, Missouri. Missouri, depending where you're from. I would that deserves to be there. Uh, the Shape of Water. Yeah. The Post. Not the Shape of Water again. It's like a personal. It's like yeah. I, I've never been hooked on it. The Post. I uh, actually I don't I don't know what that's about. Well, I've heard a lot about it, but well, while you look it up, I'm going to continue. Okay. Uh, Phantom Thread. That is the Daniel Day Lewis PTA movie. Again, haven't seen much. About Lady Bird. Which Ooh, heard first publisher things. of a major American newspaper or female publisher, my bad. There you go. Get Out. Oh, Spielberg directed it. Yeah. That's cool. Sorry. Dunkirk. Oh, yeah. Get Out is, by the way, my pick. Love Get Out. Dunkirk. Darkest Hour. And That's then, the thing. When we talked about our favorites, on, you remember when we were talking about our favorites yeah. and that, that podcast ended up being canned? Yeah. I'm really sad. About, we forgot to bring up Get Out. Like, that makes me so upset. No, I think we, no, we brought it in. We, we Did mentioned we? it and we, it got cut out. Oh, that's pissing me off. I, get Out was, I watched it back and was like, this is fucking fantastic. So, um, a snub in my mind. Three snubs. Blade Runner. Baby Driver. And Logan. You yeah. can't tell me they at least deserve a goddamn nomination. Like, you can you can get rid I'd of... I'd like to think they're at least thrown in the hat of like, nominations. Get rid but. of Darkest Thread, whatever. Fan of Thread. Get rid of that. Who cares? I don't give a shit. Well, I, I, no, it's gone. It's stricken from the record. No, I'm not screwing it. <laughs> I'm just saying Oscars are so... I I hate the Oscars. I'll be honest. I think that it it it, it highlights not always the best parts of cinema. I think that it highlights some of the most beautifully shot and well-directed things, but I don't think it highlights some of the best. Because you can't... 
Baby Driver was the best experience, one of the best experiences I've had yeah. with a movie where I think I, I had that same experience with Get Out. Get Out was a ride through and through. That's why I keep I keep coming back to it. Kind of like, and same with Dunkirk. I think Dunkirk was an experience, but I found these other ones were just like, even the three billboards to Missouri thing, that was well done, but it wasn't, there's, there's, supposed, there's an emotional side of film that I think a lot of these movies don't always encapsulate. Mm -hmm. I think that they're fantastic. It's, and also a lot of times nomination, or Oscars and shit are like, that shit's being puppeted for sure. Like a lot of times for your, you have to campaign for your movie to be nominated, which means you have to spend money for yeah. your movie to be nominated. Which means a lot of if you have backing behind your movie, like Edgar Wright's not going to spend movie, money to get his movie nominated because he knows he's good. Yeah. He likes what he made. So, oh, I don't know. One of the very few visual uh, uh, things nominated for for fucking Blade Runner is in visual effects. Visual effects: we have Blade Runner, Guardians Two, uh, Kong oh. Skull Island, which I understand. Dude, Star I get Wars. Guardians Two too. Guardians Two would fantastic. War season. for the Planet of the Apes wins. Oh, yeah. You can't, like, Caesar was real. Yeah. Like, you can't, I there's no feel way. Yeah. Like, Kong Skull Island was such an amazing fucking visual looking movie. I love it. It's so beautiful and stuff. Blade Runner, again, that monkey was real. Yeah. That's a real monkey. You, you can't, you can't fight. <laughs> yeah. What other awards we got? Costume design? We got costume design, which Beauty and the Beast, Darkest Hour, Phantom Oh, Shape Thread, of Water. Shape of Water. She, the fish guy, as much as I cracked on like how he loves fish guy and stuff like that, it's fucking, it's all practical yeah. effects and it looks amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, original score, we got Dunkirk, uh, Hans Zimmer, Phantom Thread, uh, Johnny Greenwood, Shape of Water, Alexander Desplat. Oh, Dunkirk. Star Wars, John William. And Dun Dunkirk for sure, but I mean, you gotta, you gotta respect the Star Wars nod. You gotta, you gotta say, it's a classic. Yeah. If to get nominated for score yeah. with the Star Wars score. It's also John Williams. There's no way you're not oh, gonna hell put John yeah. Williams. John Williams is here. fucking fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Hans Zimmer though, it's Hans Zimmer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like he, they, they, He's the titan of fucking score. What what other interesting ones do we have? Uh, interesting. Let me see here. Best got, oh, documentary? Uh, cinematography. There we go. We got Blade Runner, Darkest Hour, Dunkirk. Ooh, I Mud actually Mouth, might say Blade Runner for that one. Shape of Water. Do you know what's not there? What? Baby Driver. Yeah. It's, I'm sorry, dude. It's it's ridiculous. It's uh, I I'm sad to admit that not a, not as many people appreciated Baby Driver as I did. A lot of I've, I had some people that just said they just straight up didn't like it, and you got you got to accept that fact as hard as it is, Lib. <laughs> we got to accept it. Uh, let's see. So uh, we had another one. You were looking at best documentary. I didn't see. I didn't watch any documentaries this year. Yeah, so. I can't. I can't even. That's why I was just. I was wondering which were made. Original screenplay. Ah, I want to see what screenplay. Original screenplay. And then we'll look at animated uh, animated films. Okay. All right. Uh, while I read them out, could you go check the yep, yep. Yep. All right. So, <coughs> best original screenplay. Fucking late. The Big Sick, Get Out, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, Missouri, depending where you're from. Shape of Water is kind of getting pissed. It's nominated for fucking everything. <laughs> so Lib's mad because it's getting nominated for everything. That's what he just said while he was leaving. Um, in all honesty, for original screenplay, The Big Sick. Uh, that would be my number one pick. I think that should win. Uh, Emily Gordon and Kumail Nanjiani made such... Took something that could have been a very basic story, which was guy falls in love with girl, girl rejects, something bad happens, and they somehow find their way back together, and that would have been it. They took this story, and which is actually like the real life uh, experience with Emily and Kumail of how they met, what had happened, how they fell apart, and like it all, it's just like based on their life, obviously an exaggerated emotion version of it. But still, this is what happened in their life. The fact that the story actually concentrates more about, at first, th like after the, the tragedy that happens, the relationship that Kumail has with, was it Holly Hunter and Ray Romano? Oh my God. And you build it from there? It's unreal. Sorry, I stopped because I thought Lib couldn't get in. Uh, but yeah, it, it's one of those moments where you see that and then it's you actually feel more and more for Ray Romano and Holly Hunt, or Holly Hunter, whatever her name is. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your last name. With how things turn out between Emily and Kumail, and then how everything kind of how it wraps up at the end is so beautiful. 
What are you pointing? I know, I know for adapted screenplay. Yeah. It's there. Okay, it's what are we talking about? Uh, for sick? original screenplay, I was saying that get, uh, The Big Sick should win for original screenplay. I, I didn't, I didn't in, see The Big Sick. I was invested through and through. Really? Yeah. Actually, I wouldn't mind saying that. But it wouldn't be. I wouldn't put that for best I, stuff. But yeah, it's screenplay was fucking top. Not to be mean, but I heard it was overrated. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I heard from some people. That's funny because I just wanted to like while you're other like a two minute rant of like why it's not why yeah. it's good. Yeah. Why it's I good. I haven't seen it personally. I can't say. I thought yeah. it looked very interesting. Mm-hmm. You want me to um, read out the original screenplays again? Yep. Yeah. All right. Big Sick, Get Out, Lady Bird, Shape of Water, and Three Buildings Outside Ebbing, Missouri. Missouri, depending where you're from. Okay, so I'm actually I'm gonna I'm gonna believe you on the big sick here, okay. but personally I would probably say I love Get Out, but I actually might say I think Get Out a lot of it comes from the performances and direction more okay. than the script, so I might say three build three billboards outside of Missouri. Ebbing, Missouri, Missouri. Ebbing, Missouri. Depending where you're from. I just I just keep calling it Missouri. Yeah. Um, adapted screenplay. Lib pointed it out. So I got to <laughs> read it out. So we got Call Me by Your Name, The Disaster I, Artist. I like The Disaster Artist, yeah. but uh, Logan. Molly's Game and Mudbound. Logan. Yeah. Because of the thing that they adapted was a comic yep. into that beautiful piece of art. Yeah, 135%. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I'm Logan yeah. for sure. Uh, then we're going to take a look at animated features. <laughs> oh my God. The yeah, okay. Bot- da, 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 da. Yeah, I'm going to read them out. I'm going to read them out. Read that one last. Yep, yep. So we have Loving Vincent. Didn't see that. Ferdinand. I Coco. Like, I feel like I know what Ferdinand The Breadwinner. And the one that'll sweep it all, the Boss Baby. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope Boss Baby wins. That movie was, it was fucking trash, but <laughs> I just hope it wins because there's nothing else there I care about. I am surprised that Ferdinand is there. Because I didn't think Ferdinand, Ferdinand was that great of a movie. Oh, and by the way, the Lego Batman movie came out in 2017, Lib. That actually wasn't bad. Captain Underpants. Coco. That was trash. Came out. The emoji. <laughs> yeah, that's right. What is Ferd? I didn't even know Ferdinand, Ferdinand existed. Stars. Young bull who escapes from a training camp. Stars. John Cena as Ferdinand. <laughs> and Peyton Manning yep. as Gu- I don't want to. I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Yep. I watched that with Sam. Obviously, mm-hmm. um, it's okay. It's okay. Okay. Um, it's okay. Okay. It doesn't belong on the animated best yeah, animated. Yeah, boss baby. <laughs> I, yeah. I would rather see Despicable Me 3 on there, and I would rather see All right, let's Lego Batman. Thing. I would rather see Lego, Lego Batman. Lego Batman movie should fucking be there, and if not win, be second place to Coco. I never saw Coco 2. I just I didn't see any animated movies this year. I mean, you're growing up. You're not a little boy anymore. Yeah, but I mean, I love animated I know, movies. I, know. I would, you know, who I would nominate just for my knowledge of animated movies. I just, I just vote for Zootopia again because Zootopia was the best animated movie I've seen in a while. Other what? than Moana, Moana was actually pretty good too. Wait a minute, Moana wasn't this year. It wasn't. No. Are you sure? Yep. It felt like it was. I, 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 I'm taking your word for it, but. Wow. Okay, let's just talk about this real quick. There's some fucking heavy hitters in 2016 for yeah. animated. You got Zootopia, Finding Dory, Moana, Secret Life of Pets, Sing. Don't say Sing. Sing is trash. We got Kung Fu Panda 3. <laughs> Did you like Sing? I didn't mind it. I, I hated it. I honestly Sing. didn't mind it. As much as we joked about it the one day where like I was in love with it and like you and Cole were like, ripping yeah. it apart. I didn't mind it. I actually hated it. <laughs> Genuinely. Uh, Kung Fu Panda 3, Kubo and the Two Strings, which I heard amazing things about. A sausage oh, yeah. party. Because Kubo and the Two Strings sausage fucking party. stop motion. Sausage uh, party. I wouldn't win. Don't get me wrong, but sausage party. I didn't even literally like that sausage party that much. It made me laugh because it was so dumb. It it was. It was just. Yeah. It was a literal. I wasn't in the mind space to watch it when yeah. I watched it. I was just like, it was too dumb for me. <laughs> you got to be at a certain level in your brain to watch a Seth Rogen movie and, yes. and enjoy it. I can I can agree with that. To, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I guess that goes through all of the nominations. Yeah, all and the stuff. ones that, that are really most important. Baby Driver got snubbed hard. Logan, Logan got snubbed hard. Blade Runner. Blade Runner got snubbed hard. And Shape of Water is going to win everything, apparently. Um, it's going to win a shit ton of awards. It's nominated for like eight things. Yeah. It's going to win at least four of them. Yeah. But that is uh, our movie segment. Uh, yep. Kind of over and done with. Probably got like, ooh. What are we at like right now? Uh, we're about an hour. Okay. Yeah, yeah. not too bad. 
Uh, again, for a two-man show, we're doing pretty goddamn good. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I want to talk about something. <coughs> Excuse me. Very quickly. Um, this kind of goes with Haley. Because uh, Haley's <laughs> vegetarian or he's vegan? Uh, vegetarian and, like, it's kind of her current living situation. Yeah. Like, the fact that she, like, even though she's at her res and stuff, she still lives at home. When okay. she goes back, it's hard to be vegan when, you know, someone else is cooking for you. And yeah, you respect. They're, and they're not even vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. So um, she, when she gets her own place, she'd like to start going vegan. But vegan. right okay. now, she's vegetarian. Okay, but still, she identifies herself as a vegan. I no, as a vegetarian. Vegetarian, but going to be vegan. Yes, but she does, it's not like it's not like it's not like there is an identification. Yeah, yeah I know what you mean, but like she will make an effort to try to eat uh, the the vegan yeah, diet. Yeah, she doesn't she drink can. milk. Yeah. She tries to stay away from cheese and stuff, but cheese is just too goddamn good. You're right. You're right. You're right. I can't go. I could go vegetarian. I couldn't go vegan. I eat too much cheese. <laughs> All right. So there is a thing that's been happening a lot lately. I mean, it happened before, but it's, it, this is just a discussion I want to talk about. Mm-hmm. It's been coming up more and more. Um, Test tube meat, lab meat. I don't even know what that is. So basically, scientists oh, have yes. been finding ways yes, I know. on how to create meat out of just protein that isn't from animals or whatever. They just have the protein. I don't know how to get it, but they have it's it. Like, it's like cells and shit. Yeah. Right? And they literally grow a slab of meat. Yes. So I'm a meat eater. If I saw that, I would try it out. Oh, hell yeah. I would have no problem with that. Um, apparently, the basis of that is like... It's, it doesn't even, like, it's just, it's a bland, they, they, they could say it has a texture of meat, but people, like, when you say, what does it taste like, apparently it's like, it's not beef or it's not chicken, it's just meat flavor, <laughs> like, they, they can't put their yeah, finger on it. Yeah, um, it's, it's, it, it does everything meat does, yeah, just <laughs> but tastes we, weird. Yeah, I, I would love to try it, I'd be very curious about it. Um, would you try that? Oh, for sure, for sure. Would Haley try that? This is th- no. This is vegetarians or vegans. I'm actually curious about this, and I kind of wish we had a vegetarian um, or vegan on to talk about it because this is not a cruelty to animals at all. This is just something scientifically created out of proteins. The thing is, what it's she is not only vegetarian out of cruelty or okay. anything like that. She actually, it's like a lot of times it's like health reasons and stuff. Okay. And same with my brother and his girlfriend. So his girlfriend is vegan. Okay. And she does it because of the diet, also because of she, like, loves animals, doesn't want to hurt them, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Brother could give a shit. He doesn't care if you kill a cow or anything. That. He does it for the dietary part. Okay. It's actually made him healthier. He's been eating less junk through it. So um, it's, I don't know. I think that in terms of an ethical point, I think it's fine. It's, 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 it's science. It's yeah. not hurting anybody. Yeah, you're not literally ripping this from an animal or yeah. whatever. This is just... Protein well, cells. Well, like, not to be mean, but I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> like, like yeah, yeah. the thing is, the the reason I support this is because there's a lot of really bad things happening because we are breeding cows so much and chickens and stuff and then slaughtering them. It's not from an ethical standpoint. It's from a, like a, like an ecological standpoint. It's a terrible thing that's happening to the environment. Like, yeah. like, like all the cows are, up, yeah. yeah, they're fucking up the ozone layer and stuff. Yeah. So I totally support it. Um, now, would you, th- so... For a vegetarian or a vegan, do you think they would want to try this? Oh, I think so. I think it's worth a shot for anybody. Because like, if, if it gives you all the benefits, we'll say all the benefits of protein that you get from actual meat without yes. hurting an animal. Again, th- th- I am not like, oh, fucking go meat. Bro, vegans are shit. I don't, I don't care. I yeah. think I like to joke that sometimes vegans are extremists or there are certain, but they're on both yeah. ends. On any yeah. end, you will have those extremes, right? Uh, uh, a meat eater will make fun of a vegan. A vegan will down talk a fucking meat eater. It's it's an endless cycle of hate. This yeah, is how it is. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> I, I am very curious because I, I think this could be an awesome solution for, for vegans or vegetarians who don't want to hurt animals to have the, 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 the substance, the, 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 the proteins, the like everything that goes good with meat without the torture of animals. Yeah, I think so too. Because I think a big majority of vegans, vegetarians is because yeah. of the cruelty to animals. And I think... This completely solves it. Yeah. Also, um, tofu after a while is fucking gross. I was veg- I went vegetarian for a year. I fucking hated it. I fucking tofu. You gotta spice the yeah. shit out but of. But even after a while, man, the texture just it got to me. Yeah. Uh, it's. I don't. I don't. I. I don't, I don't really got an opinion much on it. Yeah. You, just, you would try. I support it. Yeah. I think that if it becomes more mainstream, I love it. I think that as a as a as a people, we gotta stop drinking milk. Yeah, we were talking I don't, about this. I don't, even, I don't even care about, like, cheese and stuff. Because, I mean, it's made out of the same stuff. 
but just milk in general is not good for well, you. The consumption that people have cheese versus milk is totally skewed over milk. Like yeah. people have a thousand times more milk than they'll ever have cheese in their yeah, life. Yeah, and it's also milk is a higher concentration of dairy than yeah. cheese. Well, depending on the cheese. Exactly right. But cheese is so weird because it's just like it's basically just like super aged milk that's mixed with a bunch of shit. Yeah. Um, but just milk in general is, I'm pretty sure it's like, we weren't, we weren't made to drink another animal's milk. Yeah. We were talking about, it's like, like technically you were saying like, we are as a human species, technically all lactose intolerant. Yeah. It's just, some of us can stomach it better and others just, it falls apart in the system because it's not natural for us to consume milk from another animal. And milk, milk doesn't have like, it's not like a disease or anything. It's not like you've been drinking it for 20 years. You're going to die. It's literally just milk makes you gassy. Yeah. But it does it to everybody because it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to be like that. I don't know. It's it's something that people that it was like a, instead of drinking water, it was a way that farmers could drink something that was not bad for you. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it does have calcium. It does provide benefits. It's just for me. It's just I don't like the taste. And I also it's like it just it doesn't it doesn't work with my body now. I don't yeah. like it. I would rather, in all honesty, if I could afford it, I would rather go with almond milk. I love, al- like, unsweetened almond milk. Yeah. is so fucking good. I like almond milk, too. I mean, I, I love water. Water yeah. over everything. Yeah. I drink so I much water. I don't know if I could put this in cereal, though. I don't, I don't even eat cereal anymore, to be honest. Really? See, Toaster foods for me, dude. I eat, I eat toast every day. You eat fucking Pop-Tarts, motherfucker. Yeah, I've been on... <laughs> I have. It's in a toaster. I do, but yeah. I've been on this huge toast... Ca- I've been eating, like... Two, two pieces of toast every morning. It makes me happy. Well, it's funny because though I'm, I've gone the opposite way of like, I never used to, I, for the longest time, I wasn't eating any cereal or any, anything with milk right in the morning. I just, at the hotel, I couldn't do it anymore. Uh, like they're like, like continental breakfast. Look, don't get me wrong. Comforting your soul. You guys are amazing. I love you. No, they, they're not going to see this. Yeah. But there's only so many times I can eat scrambled eggs that are, there's water leaking out of it. Like soggy scrambled yeah. eggs. When you can see the problem yourself and you're like, I could fix this yeah. if you let me. Or they're potatoes that are sometimes so stiff when I eat them. Yeah. I can't. So I had to start eating cereal because I just, it's, or I might even, I'll start having their waffles or whatever, their pre made waffle mix. I don't care anymore. I just can't. I have to take a break from their eggs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's. I it's, I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day about how I got a sandwich once it, like like recently yeah yeah and I saw the person making the sandwich and I asked for onions on it and there's like fundamental rules to making a sandwich okay 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 I'm like the, I'm liking let's go one of those being that you got to realize the savory things over the complementary things so lettuce you can pack lettuce on a sandwich yeah you're not gonna taste the lettuce it's more of it adds the flavor yeah onions are very potent. very potent. Yeah. You got to realize when I ask for onions, you don't load it with onions. <laughs> and then I said pickles as well. He loaded it with pickles. I mean, it's the most like, it's the most like, you know, first world problem I have right now is that people aren't making my sandwiches right. <laughs> but you got to, you got to know, you got to, you, you make the sandwich right. You, just tomatoes. Fine. Tomatoes aren't that strong. They're kind of watery. But, thin slices of tomatoes. Yeah, for me, no, if I did that. no thick tomatoes. That's yeah, too much. It's gross. Um, but disgusting. It's just it's, it's pissed me off. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm like we put too much, way too much onions on my fucking sandwich right now. Well, see, for me, it's I don't I, so, since I don't like onions. That to me, like the moment you said that, I'm like I'm out. Fuck you. You're done. Yeah. 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 Get out of this. Get off this podcast set. What I love. What yeah. I, for me, I hated onions for the longest time. And I just had a burger and someone put onions on it. I was like, fuck, fine. And I ate it. And I was like, I like these. Um, once um, after, what was it? Oh, uh, I was coaching uh, one of my uh, one of the fighters back at the old academy. Dude, you're such a fucking fighting nerd. I'm I sorry. am. I am. I love it, dude. Uh, I was it was uh, I was coaching slash it was my, it was my first outing into the whole world of Muay Thai okay. uh, in northern Ontario. So Jeff needed a corner like a second corner man. He asked me if I wanted to. I said yes. We we drove off. And we had the fight. It was cool. Afterwards, we were celebrating because that guy won. And drink a couple of beers. Everything's fine. Um, then other people's guy, like, yeah, I can't drink this because I got to drive. So they gave me the beer. I chugged it. And then someone's like, yeah, I'm done. You can have this. So I chugged it. And then Jeff's like, we got to leave soon. Here. I chugged it. So I had like, in probably the time span of like 15, 20 minutes, I had like five or six beers. Oh, man. So I'm like, woo! Yeah. Like, hey, right. hey, like, we did let's, it. Let's get out of here. Uh, so we were in North Bay, which I know for you. Shit. So I just punched my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> North Bay shit! So uh, I just gotta fix this. North Bay for you, uh, I know it doesn't really mean much. Uh, it's about an hour and a half away from. Yeah, I know where North Bay is. Do you? 
Yeah, I've okay. heard of it before. Uh, North Bay is about an hour and a half, depending on how fast you drive from from Sudbury. We stopped at Timmy's. I got myself like a chicken, no, uh, chipotle steak oh, wrap. From yeah, they throw onions on that bitch. So I made sure no onions. I didn't think about it, and then I got it. There was lettuce and a shit ton of tomatoes in there, and just like something wrong. I'm like drunk. I'm like, no, I guess not. Just bite into it, and like Tim Warren's tomatoes are crisp too, so it's not just like a squish. It was like. Krush! Yeah. I don't know. Oh, it's not bad. I fucking just, just devour it. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I'm fine with tomatoes on burgers or fucking sandwiches. Not like I'm okay with it. But it had to take me to get drunk no. and just consume it and just be like, well, oh, shit, I For sometimes you have one experience that's bad and then you hate it forever. And then you try it later and you're like, well, my palate has cha- yeah. changed because I have grown up and that is what happens. Mustard, another very really good example. I used to hate mustard on fucking burgers or mustard on anything. I oh. fucking hated it. I love mustard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, again, I got drunk once with uh, my buddy Tom and he was making... So we had watched recently the movie Chef uh, okay. with John Favreau. Amazing oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing fucking film. I love that film. Uh, and we made those... Um, the, the, the thing that was a big... The big hua in, in, in the movie, the, the that sandwich thing, what are the cubanos? Cubanos, yeah. Okay. Which was like uh, ham, pickles, mustard, and provolone cheese, I think. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah. So he, and you know, we were drinking and he made that. And he's like, you're going to fucking eat this. And I'm like, there's pickles. I hate pickles. There's mustard. I hate mustard. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I eat them. I'm like, this is really good. And then for the next like three hours, because he had made a bunch of them, because a bunch of people were supposed to come over. And, like, they weren't hungry, so I'm like, I'm just going to fuck them. Yeah, I'm just going to eat them all, man. It was so good, dude. It was so fucking good. But, yeah, like you, were, like you said, like, sometimes you just have to try. I know I still don't like onions because I've tried onions. Mm-hmm. Like, just an onion or cooked into something without it being finely chopped, and I fucking hated it. So I still know I'm out for onions. Yeah. Unless, like I said, if it's in a, if it's in a meat sauce for, like, a spaghetti, I don't give a shit. Oh, yeah. As long as it's not, like, this big, I don't fucking care. But, like, on a sandwich itself where yeah. it has its own. Yeah. And then talking Jeez. about the restaurant stuff before, I, if I saw that, I won't be like, you need to turn this around and bring it back. Because I'll just be like, oh, whatever. Do, do, do. Well, a lot of times at restaurants, too, they don't like, they don't chop up onions. They just like put like the onion slices yeah. more. So it's easier to take off. Um, also, um, another weird thing, as much as I love onions, I hate fried onions. Really? Yeah. It's the one thing it's, I can't, when I love cooking with onions, because onions really add like a nice flavor to it. So a lot do you of mean stuff. like caramelized onions you don't like? No, not not exactly caramelized. Like, have you ever made pierogies before? Yep. And you, you cook them with like the onions, and then a lot of times people eat the onions with the pierogies. And to you, it's like, nah. No, I, I love cooking with the onions, mm-hmm. but it's like, I'm not gonna, I don't like, because for you'll me, a lot, of, a lot of what I like about onions is like, like the crispiness of it okay. and like that what it adds there and i don't like it when it's soft and mushy <laughs> that's one my, my weird thing my i'm <laughs> <laughs> sorry that was, that was an easy one for me i want to die <laughs> i it's i'm really particular about food okay i get that though like you gotta everyone especially if you've done if you've cooked for a while by yourself or you've worked in a restaurant you start getting a style and you start getting a taste for things and then you start getting really your palate really opens up and you start tasting things differently where mm-hmm. before maybe you like parsley on your sandwich. Now you don't. Maybe you like um, that shit that tastes like soap. Um, oh my God. What is it? Lib. It's the, it's the, it's a, it's a garnish you can put on that's like split between 50, 50 with people. Some people say it tastes great. And some people say it tastes like soap. Parsley. Uh, is it parsley? I don't think it's parsley. Hold on. Garnish that taste. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Like what is it called? Soap. <laughs> Cilantro. Yep, that's what it was. I, I, it was. I knew what it was, but I yeah. like didn't have the fucking name. Yeah, I hate cilantro. I will. I, I don't know if I'll ever really like cilantro. It, it literally tastes like soap to me. That's fair. I don't mind cilantro. Cilantro is more like a, it's like if it's on there, I'm just gonna move it when I'm eating the actual stuff. Yeah. Well, again, like I will never turn something around and give it back. If I sell the cilantro, I'd just be like. Yeah, it's easy. It's just like a little bit of yeah. green shit. I mean, sometimes if it's diced, it's hard to yeah. get off shit. If it's in a burrito, I'm fucked. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I can't open this <laughs> up and be like... They're like, oh, do you want us just to take the cilantro out? You're like, no, I got it. You just open it up and like fucking... Yeah, it's like six hours later. If <laughs> this I'm is fine. Up. I'm happy. <laughs> You've got a great tip for this. Is he actually tip yeah. You're like, we don't understand your emotion right now. <laughs> I'm a sarcastic son of a bitch. What can I say? <sighs> I'm gonna... You guys are great. I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> five out of five on Yelp. Just like God. On, on fucking Yelp, too. Like <laughs> Yelp. Oh, man. 
Do you ever realize that sometimes there are jokes that you say that you start repeating because you know you, you get a decent reaction out of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The potted plant thing for Harvey Weinstein was my thing for a while. I did it to, I did it on this podcast. I'm going to drop it now because I'm kind of over it. Uh, and then the other thing is usually it's been like the 5 out of 5, the 10 out of 10. Would do again or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I'll do that every now and then because I'm like, yeah, it's funny and I can get a quick laugh out of it. Well, for me, it's, I think I think I, I might have told you about this. It's just something that's come back to me is this one – just this one, um, like, inside joke I had with my buddy that I just find. It's so stupid. Yeah. And I find it fucking hilarious. Okay. And it's when we're quoting um, uh, the fish guy from Star Wars. Can't remember his name. It's oh, uh, Admiral. Um, Admiral. Akbar. Yeah. Yeah. I think every, every time we quote him, instead of yelling, it's a trap, we yeah. yell, it's a trick. It's a trick. I don't, I don't know. It's somebody just, it's a trick. And it's like, it's like, everyone's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> what do you say? Like, I don't know why. It's so fucking funny to me. Because people like, you're quoting around. You're like, I know. It's the part. It's no, the I'm part. not. <laughs> and then also, it's like, we just, we had this whole thing of butchering everything about Star Wars. Because we had this huge Star Wars fan. Okay. We always approach him with questions. And we'd be like, so, so when do Luke Star Wars and Ham Sandwich meet? And then he'd be like, <laughs> he'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? We're like the main characters. <laughs> it's just... The dumbest thing. Oh, you okay? You look rattled. I just, I opened up uh, Instagram real quick or my phone because I need to check the time because I'm going to run over to the thing. This is <laughs> what I'm greeted to. No, I'm just Jesus. Like, well, Jessica Negri, you are one in a million, lady. All right. I'm I thought it was, that. I legitimately thought it was anime at first. I mean, I think she does the best. Liv, we're going to talk about two more things. Uh, you want to talk about the Logan Paul? Start it off. Okay. Uh, Logan Paul's still an asshole, so. <laughs> I mean, like, that's, like, the beginning of the story, legitimately. Um, if anybody saw, he, he reposted his return video. So he reposted that video. It was, like, about suicide and mental illness and stuff. I never watched it because I don't want to support him. But um, if I don't remember if that one got saved. I actually did say that in, in a video before, like, a podcast. I said that um, uh, I think that it would be the best course of action if he actually did go out and put a video Talking about mental health and stuff. So proud of him for that. But <laughs> he posted on Twitter a video. Um, and that video was called The Return. Just like The Return, period. And and in that video, um, Logan Paul, he has, he has a narrator basically having this dramatic buildup of of like, there once was a man, I mean a boy, who was also a chach. I don't know what that word means, by the way. That's part chach. of Yeah, it's part of his community or something. He's like, and he will be, he will come back as a hero and a maverick and shit. This whole played out, dramatic, fucking stupid comeback video. And it's like, do you forget what you did? <sighs> You, it would be better if you just came back and said, "Hey guys, I know what's, I know what's happened was bad, but you know I'm here to, I'm here to make more stuff, and I want you to know, like, blah 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 blah. Yeah, we're ready. To I move messed on. up, you know. I support mental wellness, wellness or mental wellness and shit. <laughs> Hellness, <laughs> Hellness. Anywho, he's like, I blah blah blah. blah. So you know, I'm gonna start posting videos and stuff, guys. But remember, remember, we gotta be, we gotta be smart about our mental health, shit like that. No, he posts out. This, oh, I'm coming back. Ah, rah, rah. I was pushed down by everybody, but Logan Paul is back. No, you weren't. You weren't pushed down. You weren't exiled. You were a fucking idiot. <laughs> and you deserved to go away for a while to take some time to think. But it's clear that he hasn't thought at all about what he's done. Oh, he's ready to be like, it's like, it's, it's as if he like, I got a speeding ticket. I did it bad. Well, let's move on. That's what he's treating it no, as. That's not even how he's treating it. It's not, let's move on. It's, I got a speeding ticket and the world puts me down for that. Uh, but don't worry, I'm back. And it's like, no. <laughs> he's making him sound like the victim. He is... He is Rocky in Rocky Two, where he's gonna win the title back. Like, yeah, he's, gonna win the title he's, and stuff. he's this person that's been been gone for so long. He's back and he's ready. Even though he's been gone for like two weeks. Yeah, stop. Just <laughs> <laughs> ah, he's a fucking idiot. Yep, yep. See, yeah, I thought, you were I thought he might actually learn something. No, nope. that's the saddest part. I thought he might actually learn from this shit. No, nope. but no, he's a dumbass. No, because he, he. I told you before, he's a fucking sociopath. He, he is. really is. And this he's is not going to change it. That's the saddest part. He's not going to change it at all. Nope. 
the, it was a suicide force this one time where he found a, unfortunately but, someone who had committed but, suicide. Next time it's going to be, I'm in front of a live murder scene. Guys, this is crazy. I'm killing someone right now. Yeah. Fuck. It's, but what happened is because of the suicide thing, they looked and he just has this huge pattern of just being an ass to everybody. Yeah, it's a cycle. And it's not going to change. Stop watching Logan Paul. He's what? terrible. That's the thing. It, it, it's the, His supporters are these 12-year-old, 13-year-old kids who don't care about the repercussions of the world, who oh. don't care about what he actually did. Because, oh my God, it's Logan Paul and he dabs. And I don't, honestly, I don't know what the fuck else he does. Mm-hmm. He dabs and he has a, lo- a, a clothing line based off his bird, well, Maverick. The thing, that, the thing is he posted the video on Twitter, which um, was a smart move. Yeah, because it would have gone destroyed on fucking on YouTube. Yep. So the video has about three, four million views. Okay. Has about fifteen thousand likes. And this guy, this guy, like quoted that video saying, like, it, it's probably higher than fifteen thousand. Yeah. I think that's the last number I saw. <laughs> um, but somebody quoted his video and their own tweet and just said, "Well, he didn't learn anything." And then I think that has more likes now. <laughs> So I think people are starting to realize that he's an idiot. Yeah. But they're still going to watch him. Yep. That's the thing is everyone wants to hate on him, but to, the best thing you can do is not give him attention. But that's not what's going to happen. No, people situation. are going to forever just – even if they shit talk him, you're getting him what he wants. You, got, you have to watch a video. Yep. You have to watch this video to make fun of him. Yep. It's, it's, thankfully, I actually haven't. I've heard enough news coverage about the stupidity that he did. And with Philip DeFranco and Ethan Klein. Well, he put, a, he put a video out like about like about mental health and stuff. I just yeah. didn't spend the time to watch it because I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I, I did the same thing with Jake Paul. When Jake yeah. Paul was in all that shit, I watched the videos because it was funny. Yeah. But then you realize, you're like, I don't want this to happen anymore. I got to stop supporting it. And also, you just get over it where you're like, yeah. this is, it's not even funny anymore. It's His just, humor, is, from what I've seen from a lot of people who it's went not, from it's being not a fan humor. to not. It's Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Flip club. This costs $9,000. Yeah. Ah, I'm a maverick. Ah, I can see colors. You've seen <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> Sorry, crying. Yeah. Dude, you cry? It's, it's so beautiful. And then like the week prior, he's like, I'm a pink moon, motherfucker. Yeah, the fuck he like, says. look at all these colors yeah. he recognized. <laughs> like, fuck you, dude. It's, You're a hypocrite. The thing is, the worst part about it is he has the same thing I have. It's a color deficiency. Sometimes... Blues look purple. Sometimes oranges look red. Okay. That's it. That's as far as it goes. I can when he's like your birds. When he's like my birds just yellow. He's like no, it's not, bro. It's like red and stuff. Like his bird is like multiple colors, but Logan thought the bird was yellow. Bullshit. Because we have the same thing, and I can see that damn bird being different colors. <laughs> it's. It, it'd be like it'd be like if he put out a video about how he's blind. Yeah. Or like not not blind. That's a bad example. About like. Like how he lives with one leg, but he's actually just missing a toe. A person with actually one leg is gonna be like, no, no that's dude. not, it's not it. <laughs> no, it would be, it would be like the blind thing. Be like, oh man, I've never seen him my entire life. In the last week, he was just running around being an idiot in Japan. He could be like, yeah, I'm blind. I could never seen, I can't see anything. I've just then, been using my fucking sonar sensors. Yeah, and then now, and now he has like these special special eyeglasses that somehow turn the infrared into visual, you know, impairment, so he can th- see things now. It, it's the exact fucking same thing. I've, it's, it's I've that used stupid. those it's that things. Stupid. I know. I've used those things before. They're yeah. not that cool. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. You're uh, you're a sociopath. You'll never learn. I don't want to waste too much more breath on you. Yeah. I, I mean, whatever. All I have to say about it is he's still an idiot. Look, stop watching. You're him. a hustler, and you've been able to hustle the world for this long, and you made money. Good for you. But I will never support you. I don't care. I don't. I, so I can come at me. Yeah. And be like, I want to give you a job. I'm like, I'd rather continue doing this. You'd rather be lonely and sad. Yeah. Boy, if he was, he's like, you can be a maverick, bro. I'd be like, I'm <laughs> <laughs> not even saying words. <laughs> please, I say, I say, please, and then I leave. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I wasn't answering. <laughs> I'll see you. I'll see you on Monday then. Any anything else to talk about? Yeah, um, we uh, talked about a little bit how we uh, we had some fun with PUBG, obviously. Oh, our PUBG stories. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I have. This is the part where anybody who isn't, yeah, you get, fu- who doesn't play PUBG, just you guys fucking can tune out. This is the end. Good night, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Uh, so the last night for myself, um, I was playing. I was playing a little bit of DB, DBZ or DBFs. <laughs> Dragon Ball Fighters. DBFZ. Yeah. 
Uh, and I got tired of it just because, like, it, after a while, you just want to play something new. Yeah. Especially when you're just playing by yourself, you yeah. know, playing with other people. Yeah. It's a game that's really fun with other people, but then. I would love to bring that in next time we have a full cat crew and just have it. Like, oh, a, hell yeah. A DBZ. DBFZ. Especially because as much as I am into fighter games, I haven't played it at all, so yeah. I want to see you guys kick my ass in it. Yeah, it'll be fun. Um, but anyways, uh, so I started playing some PUBG, and I'm like, oh, Alfredo's online. That's cool. Um, I'll just join the lounge. Like, I won't, not to play. I just want to, I'd be in the, be in the lounge to hear people talk. Yeah. And, you know, he ends, his, he ends his stream. A lot of people are still in the lounge. Just, they're teaming up, and they're playing with their own, with their own teams and stuff. And I'm playing. Everything's going cool. And I'm playing my game. Everything's okay. I died one, I died one game. It was pretty shitty. Um, one thing I realized there was this dude who landed with me in the same complex. I went to a different house, grabbed my, I got a DB2898, whatever it's called. The, the LMG? Yeah, the, the one that's got the disc thing on top. Yeah. I hate that thing so much. The DP? DP? I think? Yeah, DP28. Yeah, DP yeah, it is 28 for yeah, sure. DP28, yeah. Deep, deep penetration 28. Deep. I thought it was double penetration 28. I mean, shoots, it shoots two bullets at once. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, mean, you could, I don't know. You could be right. Uh, anyways, I, I knew this dude went into this one house, and I'm like, okay, where'd this motherfucker go? And so I'm like, I'm being smart. I'm being Fredo. I'm not just running in. I'm jumping around the windows, see if I can see anyone. Yeah, I'm doing yeah, all yeah. these things. And like, I'm going around to the other houses, collecting some stuff, still keeping an eye out, making sure like I'm not going to get ganked from the back. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck? The door is wide open from where he went in. And I'm like, did he leave? So I look around the area. I don't see anything. I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, okay, I'll try to scare him. I run up and I close the door and I wait. No footsteps. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? Okay, I open the door. I, I, I control walks so like so I can just slowly walk in, take my time, take my time. And then I'm like, maybe he's upstairs. I'll try to scare him. I start running really fast. Nothing. And then I see all this loot on the floor. Fucking and two, like ARs, F556, five, five, helmets, sights, and everything. I'm like, what the, what the fuck happened to this dude? So I go into the room. I, then I see to my left. I'm like, wait, these doors are open. So I'm like, okay. So now I'm, I'm, I'm just normal walking in, walking in. Can I call it? Door- can I call it? It's a trap. No. Oh, I thought it was a trap. No. I, just, I run in and I turn. I'm like, what the fuck? There's no one in here. And I just, I just very calmly turn around. The dude's sitting in the cor- standing in the corner on top of the couch just staring at me. And I, like, at the moment I saw him, I'm like, oh, Jesus. And I just start, yeah. and I kill him, right? With a double penetration 28. Yeah. <laughs> and he's down, dead, and out. I'm like, okay, that's what he has. Nothing. Motherfucker went into the room, went into the house, went on top of a couch and just stood there. I don't know if he was hoping that I was going to just run away. He might have he might have had to go a- AFK or something. I guess, but like... That's my only... only maybe he's just a weird dude. Yeah, I guess. Or like... He, somehow, was, he was stream sniping you. You weren't even streaming. <laughs> <laughs> so that was weird. Then I ended up losing that game because I got fucked. Uh, I, found, I had found myself an AR. It was looking great. Mm-hmm. And then I was getting shot. I was, I was on Erangel, the, the, the original map. And I was running up a hill next to a little shit shack. Yep. And I started getting shot from the front. I'm like, fuck. I start running back. And then I started seeing bullets come from in front of me now. I'm like, what? Mm-hmm. So I go behind a rock. But then I see bullets again from the top of the hill shooting down at me. I'm like, what the fuck's happening right now? So I turn around and I go back to try to go to the shit shack. And there's more bullets sitting in front of me. I'm like, I don't understand. And, I, and because I'm, I'm getting shot from both sides, I can't hear where the bullets are coming from precisely. I end up by dying. I look at the death cam. Yeah, by next to the shit shack, all the way at the bottom, or just uh, down the hill, the shit shack. There's a dude who's shooting me, and there's another dude on top of the hill shooting me. <laughs> so I'm seeing this. I'm like, I'm sandwiched, and I am fucked. There is, there's, I have those moments all the time where you like, someone shoots at you. You're like, okay, I see him. I'm gonna get behind the street, and then another bullet comes. You're like, oh fuck, and then another one. You're like, ah oh, god, and you're just like <laughs> sprinting in a line. And you're like, I don't want to die. <laughs> Lucky enough, it was like early on. I was like, it was only like. There was like 40 people still left alive or something, mm-hmm. so it wasn't that big of a deal. But then the other one, this is where the chat, the, the Fredo's fam, this is where you fucked me. And you fucked me hard on this one. We were in Miramar. I'm in Miramar, excuse me. Uh, you got Sire Crowd, Crips, uh, Tricks, and Looney? <laughs> Crips, Tricks, and Looney. Uh, <laughs> Cryptic Warrior, Trickstress, uh, Looney, B- Looney, I think it's Looney Bin or Looney Binny. I'm sorry if I got that wrong. And then Sire Crowd, okay. the German dude that I showed, uh, that you saw before. Um, and they're, they're playing their own game, and then they said they're like, we're going to slightly troll people. So what they're doing is they're putting on their chat on to talk, like open, open mic, yeah. and every time they get into a car, they play the polka theme from Red vs. Blue. So in the car, like when they're driving in with the Warthog and stuff, they're playing that, and I'm like, this is pretty fucking funny. This is yeah. making me laugh. And they also decided to do the naked run, where they don't grab any weapons, they're just in their underwear and their bras, they can get a helmet and a grenade, and that's it. And they would, they would play the game like that. 
So I'm in the chat and I'm hearing this and I'm laughing. Everything's going great. And further down the game, I'm still playing. Everything's great. And then I start realizing, I'm like, like, what position am I in right now? Like, what's going on? Oh, I got, I'm in the top 10. Oh, what the fuck? I haven't seen anyone. Like, what the fuck's going on? I get lucky. I get a suppressor. I find all this crazy equipment for my, for my M16. And I, I find a car uh, on, the floor, on the floor. So I grab that. Everything's looking great. I look back up. I'm like, oh, shit, I'm in the final five. Like, what the fuck? And then they're still goofing off. So I'm listening to them. But then I start hearing... I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, I'm on top of a hill, on top of a hill. I'm like, okay, he's coming to the left. But then the polka music hits, I'm like, oh fuck, dude, like I can't hear anything, I'm like fuck, 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 and I can't switch in time to, like, to, to mute them. And this dude starts, he pops up, but he doesn't expect me to be there because I'm not walking. So we meet up, our eyes meet up for a second, I whip out the M16, bop, 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 knock him, level three helmet, and I'm like, oh my god, level three backpack, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. oh no, I'm just like, holy shit, I'm like, what the fuck? I continue watching, and I'm paying attention, I'm paying attention, final four. Final three, final two. I am now in the final two with the dude, and I'm like, I don't know where this dude is. He doesn't know where I'm at. I'm like, oh my god. They're laughing. They're having a good time, getting really loud. So now I can't hear a single fucking thing. And then it ends up by here's the hill. He's on a tree. I'm at the bottom of the hill. I have a tree. We lock eyes. We see each other. I whip out my car, and I don't have a scope on it. Or I had, sorry, I had an eight times. I hate eight times scopes, by the way. Four times. I love four times on anything it's, it's amazing i hate eight times and like i'm trying to shoot and like he's getting the better of me and stuff and like i'm trying to pay attention i'm trying to hear when he's reloading or when he's gonna move fucking polka music hits and i'm just like i'm sort of panicking now because i'm like i can't hear anything i can't mm -hmm. do anything and what i should have done was whip out my m16 put the eight there i can't sorry okay keep a scope on it because you can't put an eight times on a an m16 just sh uh, like take a hit and just pop, 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 and pop him right yep. just fucking finish the fight I didn't do that. I kept on trying to snipe fight him. I'd lost because I couldn't hear because the goddamn Pokemon was going the entire time. It messed me up to the point where I like I was in the circle. He, he needed to run to me, but I was panicking and snipe fighting him because I couldn't think straight. But then I also realized, I'm like, the only reason I made it this far was because they were goofing off and my mind wasn't so yeah, you were hyper the, yeah. attentive on the game where like, I was like twitching out about everything where I could relax and get as far as I did, get kills, but then, because the polka music hit, I got fucked. But I'm like, that's how I need to play. I need to have something in the background to kind of slightly twitch, like turn off my brain. So this becomes like a, a, a an everyday task. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I I loved it. But at the same time, I'm like, God damn it, guys, I could have won! I am the exact opposite, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I am, uh, I for me, it's, I have fun. I yeah. have a lot of fun until I'm in top 20. Because okay. top 20 is when I get locked in. <laughs> and it's funny because me and my buddy that I usually play with, is, um, his name's Alex. Yep. Um, and every time we play, it's like it's like once we're in the top 20, it's like, all right, get behind this tree, see somebody, Northwest 335, yeah. shit like that. Military talks are yeah, yeah, yeah. stuff. No, it's funny because he's in the military. So, <laughs> But I, I, I was playing with um, uh, a squad with him, uh, my buddy McConaughey that you know. Yep. Um, He's, he's not actually Matthew McConaughey. He just sounds like him. Even and though then, he's not from, like, the South or anything. Right? No, no, no. I'm pretty sure he's from, like, Central. Or, like, I don't know what that'd be. Anywho. Um, and then my brother, Sinjin. We were all playing in a squad. And uh, love you, McConaughey, but you're just, you're just trash. <laughs> he's not very good at this yeah, game. Yeah. So we're all looting houses and stuff. We, we dropped um, on the beaches near military, but not on the military yeah. side, on the other side. Yeah. And from there, we've been checking houses, went through all of Milta, haven't found a single person. And then, you know, we do that fine, and then we go to check these other houses. We all come back. But Qualia stay, or Qualia's his name. We call him Hakane, but we, yeah. his name's Qualia. So he stays on the houses that we were just checking as we were all circling back. Yeah. So he starts circling back, and he gets picked, and we couldn't see him because we were all in, like, a different like, yeah. section. And he's like, well, boys, I think this one's on you. And then he dies, and we're like, <laughs> well, nice try, Kane. And he, he died, so... It was just us three, and we had really good gear by then. Okay. Um, I think I had an M4 with a four times and an ump, I think. Okay. Uh, ump was suppressed, and M4 was not. So we circle. Haven't really met anybody. We we kill the – we tag the people that killed Qualia as they're running by, but we don't end up taking them. Okay. And then we just, like, slowly keep moving and circling around the circle and stuff till we're top 15. And then we're top 15, and – we're basically on the edge of the circle trying to find cover and stuff. The circle's been nice to us, so we've been able yeah. to move without having to run across a field. Yeah, yeah. And 
basically the way it's set up is this is like it's so this is like a hill you know this is the top this is the bottom okay. and there's like a sniper's nest here that people are in and we're have to move from trees around here to this hill so we can get cover so me and sinjin both make it here fine but alex little fucking action hero alex stops at the top of the hill and tries to take these guys on oh, God. and he picks one and kills him before he gets revived Okay. But he but now gets, he's alerted. Yep, he gets downed yep. and knocked because of it. So he's done. It's just me and Sinjin down here. Um, and what happens is basically it's about top eight at this point. Okay. So I circle back up because those guys thought Alex was alone. And Alex, is, he's still on his body and he can kind of see the guys. And he's like, okay, they're moving out now. Yeah. So I circle up to the hill and both guys are on this side of the thing, sniping at people over here. And I'm right behind them like this. I literally, I had my M4 out and I like took the time, yep. read that on, looked at it slightly and just went, poo, 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 and then he went down and then I, I, I went down and then the guy was like, looked everywhere and then started reviving me. And then I went, poo, 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 <laughs> and they both died. We, I had enough ammo at that point. I'm like, I'm not going to risk going yeah. to get them. So then the circle is like over on the left side more. Okay. So we circle back down and around and there's this guy at a tree like not even remotely uh, like aware that we're there. Yeah. And I had an SKS at that point. And I think I picked up Alex's SKS. And I just like told him, I'm like, Sinjin, shh. And he's like, what? And I just lined it up. Perfect time. Guy's not moving. Just boom. Dead. Nice. Headshot. Instantly killed him. And then from there on out, it was, I believe then it was five. It was me. It was um, two teams and then a guy solo. Okay. And then we are circling around playing this hill, playing super covering on it, not going up the hill, anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And then eventually one person gets down. So we're like, okay, so it's a, it's, um, uh, we thought it was, you know, it's a 2v, it's a 2v2 now. Mm -hmm. So we're like, let's play this safe. But then you hear, you hear shots and another person goes down. We're like, oh shit, it's a 2v1. And I'm like, and this is where I'm like, you know, I, I've been doing really well. I got like yeah. three picks or so in that last game. I had a couple kills early on because I think we dove someplace that had people on it. Okay. Um, so I was doing well. We were all doing well. The only person that really wasn't doing that well other than McConaughey, it was Sinjin. Sinjin didn't get a kill yet. So I was like, I was in this zone where I was like, yeah. all right, I'm going to have to do this. I've been carrying yeah. the team, stuff like Get that. Get in the backpack. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, Sinjin, just stay low. We don't want to turn this 2v1 into a 1v1. I like that. And he's like, I found him. And I'm like, no, Sinjin. And he gets up and shoots him and we win. And I'm like, I'm like, hell yeah, we won. Chicken dinner. Good awesome. job, man. Good job. That's what I meant. Yeah. What I meant was do your job and yeah. get the guy. I... I'm, I'm instantly one of those people where when I'm doing good in a multiplayer yeah. game, I just turn into, like, Captain Commander where I'm like, I know what I'm doing. Listen yeah. to me. And then yeah. I instantly get fucking killed. Luckily, I didn't die, but I was still like, all right, we got to play this safe. And he's like, oh, here he is, and shot him and yeah. killed him. And I was like, well, yeah, I'll take it. That's it's a funny, win. It's funny that you mentioned that. So I'm not going to name any games, but last night I was watching Fredo stream uh, mm -hmm. while I was playing uh, DB Fighters. Is Fredo always just play with his fans on Twitter? Does he do a lot of solo stuff? Um, he, he, he does a lot of solo stuff, but then what happens is, like, I'll show you right now. Uh, you guys won't be able to do this, so I apologize. But um, I'm, I'm going to show his Discord because he's live right now. And usually the lounge has like six or seven people in there. And so he's already playing with squads right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have like six or seven people here. And he's he'll be playing solos and he'll turn around and be like, motherfucker guys like i don't even talk about doing any like any like sub runs today mm -hmm. but he's like well now i got it because like people are just filling the fucking lounge yeah so like he's like we'll play he's like i don't give a shit and now he's turned it into like yeah if i go online like if i, if I stream like i know i'm gonna play with subs so i just have fun yeah. yeah yeah but yeah sometimes he will be like guys this is just a solo run i just want to like bring up my kd for uh for for the pub like for the PUBG rankings right yeah because he has, and then his fans are like okay yeah, yeah we're not gonna yeah. pressure you to play with new him. people will ask and then be like no don't worry about it just, everyone's like oh, usually everyone's okay because like right now i think uh it might have changed but i'm hoping it hasn't or it's gone better but he's in the top 100 solo kills oh, yeah i saw that yeah for the solo that. stuff so that's really crazy and cool uh but anyways uh last night when he was streaming this is the last story you guys don't worry um and so he was playing with he's playing with squads uh, with subs and he got down and he got killed. And there's this one dude, and I don't want to mention names because I don't want any issues being brought up. But he's like, well, like, that was such a toxic jump. Like, why'd you do that? I would have done this. Da, 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 da. And this guy's apparently, he's a regular sub. Yeah, it's like, you're sub to the guy. Yeah. Show him a little respect. So, <laughs> so I guess, uh, this is new to me because I've, I've never experienced this part yet. But Alfredo was just like, because he knows the dude. He's like... Dude, like, it's like, shut up, dude. Like, you do this all the time. And, like, then Chad gets on to, gets on to him. Yeah. And Lafredo's like, look, guys, like, no, you don't need to get mad at him, whatever. This is just him being like this. He does this every so often. He'll come in and he'll tell me how to play the game. And then he'll get mad. And then he'll leave for, like, three to four months. And he'll come back. And then everything's going to be great. And then so he's like, it's just a cycle. Yeah. And then this dude starts 
just starts going off and like not 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 against Fredo or everybody's like oh man this is such a toxic chat now and that, 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 that. and Alfredo was like no this is not a toxic chat you did this to yourself the moment you decided to tell me how to play the game yeah I am top 100 and I'm not bragging but I'm top 100 solo kills like in solo solo games on PUBG I know what I'm doing dude yeah and I'm then, not the person for you to say this to yeah like if I was fresh faced and I was dying all the time yeah cool but I've done this I know what I'm doing and I'm just playing with oh. my subs I got I got a story oh, just go one it. last thing it'll be yeah. quick um I had a fun Fun, fun, fun Overwatch experience last night. Okay. So I, what ended up happening was it actually ended up being, being pretty good because I went, I was playing competitive. I was just solo queuing. Yeah. And I met two guys that were like tank mains and then one guy who just played Lucio. And they're just really cool guys and they're fun to play with. So I stuck with them. I stuck, played four, played a uh, four stack with them. Um, and then we get into this game with this guy. His name's Boogie something, something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. And he picks like Roadhog right off the bat, and like that. So we all fill in fine. And then there's two DPS left open, and I haven't picked yet. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna play Junkrat. So I'm doing fine. Goal the limbs, goal damage. I get a message from oh, him, yeah. and then I get two messages after. But I didn't check any of them yet because I was in the middle of the game. So I die, and I switch to. I think I switched to someone switched from healer to damage. So I okay. ended up playing. I switched to a healer. Yeah, because it makes sense. You don't want to be co- like totally out and about without a healer. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna fill because I don't care. I was playing healer earlier, who'd and you, I was feeling uh, good. Who'd you heal with? Moira, the Ooh, new girl. She's yeah. actually she's really fun. Okay. Um, but I get I check my message from the guy, and he says he says Junkrat is so easy. GG, go kill yourself. <laughs> so and he was in the, he was in the team chat. So I read the message and I was just like, I was like laughing at it. And I was yeah. telling like my new friends and stuff. But I was like, I was like, this guy told me to kill myself. I don't even, I don't know why. And I was like, why are you mad at me right now? Yeah. And then, and then he sent me a message saying, shut up. I don't care. Your mom should die. Or something like that. And we all were dying at yeah. this point. And nothing a person like that hates more than when you think they're funny. Yeah. By doing this. So we're just dying. Yeah, because it's the stupidest to do thing is, ever. Because all they want to do is try to get you mad. And yeah. you say they try to tilt you. Yeah. You tilted. And I was just like, I was like, the thing that really tilted him though yeah. was when like um uh, the, one of my buddy one of the guys was like, You should just just report him, dude. And I was like, I'm not gonna. I'm like, he obviously has so many issues going on right now in his life that you know, I probably shouldn't report him. That'd be yeah, too yeah. much for him. And then he said he said, <laughs> what did he say? Um shut up, you stupid high school dropout. Which was weird to me that it was that specific. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, oh, you got me. <laughs> Dropped out of high school to play Overwatch competitively at the platinum level. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> and just, it was the weirdest thing ever. And then he started playing like Hanzo and Widow started throwing the game, stuff like that. Yeah, it was yeah. just like, their guys were like, what are we going to do here? I'm like, nothing you can do. Just let the child be a child. Yeah. It, it was funny. And it was just like. It's just we end up reporting him because fuck that guy. Yeah. Don't tell somebody that their mom should die and that they should kill themselves. Yeah, all these stupid behaviors online where yeah, like, like do you think that you're so anonymous you yeah. can get away with anything? Like, but it was genuinely it was nice because it was like I'm at the I'm at a maturity level when I play these games. It's yeah. like you're not gonna get me with that shit. Yeah. It's stupid. And it means you're, nothing to you. You're the idiot here, not me. It was, just, it was it was really funny. It was a funny experience to me. I don't know why. It was just it was nice to have that toxic of an experience because yeah. Overwatch has actually been pretty good to me lately. Yeah. Just for that to happen, it was like ah, thanks. So I was gonna say this is the end, but uh, you remember a while ago how I told you that my son uh, did a surprise purchase? Yeah, with uh, Minecraft. Yeah, with Minecraft. I just got a notification from Microsoft Store. Oh, well, let's see what PayPal, it is. And I'm gonna load it up. I'm hopefully it's gonna load. My Live computer. on chat. Let's see what he bought. Let's uh. I was like, a new Funhouse video to watch here. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And a new video game donkey. And a car queue. Oh, I got so many videos to watch when I get home. <laughs> so let's see what uh, this is. Hopefully my wife knows about this. Um, let's see here. I got a receipt from PayPal to talk about this. Okay. And it is Microsoft payment. Uh, Microsoft Moana character pack. My son purchased the Moana Minecraft character pack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, good choice. Moana's is good movie. Oh, it's great. This is, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Hey, son, why'd you do that? He's like, what can I say except you're welcome. Oh, my God. <laughs> and with that, everybody, thank you so much for joining the dynamic duo of Lib and I for this episode oh, of the Selection Network I'm hungry. podcast. Uh, yeah. Uh, Should I order food? I'm going to see if the Oasis is open. Still. Yeah, go from there. Go from there. Um, as always, I'm Justin Larshay. You can follow me on SSN Larshay pretty much for Instagram, uh, Twitter, 
If you want to hit us up on Facebook, it is Select Start Network uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash Select Start Network. YouTube is youtube.com slash live select start. Uh, Lib, I believe it is twitter.com slash libtree80. Yes, libtree80. All and then, word? Yep. And then liberty.roundtree4 on uh, fucking Instagram. There you go. So, everybody, thank you much for joining us. Um, once again, Lib, we knocked it out. A dual team. Hell yeah. Duo Q. Yeah. The, du, duo Q in life. Yeah. One step Woo, at a time. Woo, chicken dinner in life, bro. No, we're like the we're like in the last place of life right now. <laughs> Anyways, guys, thank you much for joining us, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Peace.